I hope that helps. It helps actually. And to me, to be honest, I do not like to interpret this verse the way it's been interpreted, but this is not our interpretation as Muslims. So when we make arguments, keep in mind that we, we approach the scripture because we believe as Muslims, we believe in the Torah and we believe in the Angel, the gospel singular of Jesus. We believe in that. And we believe this book right now, the Bible is a mixture of truth and falsehood. And the Prophet والسلام, told us, narrate from the children of Israel with no harm, but do not believe their narration nor deny their narrations. So when we approach the scripture, we be careful because Allah said, Allah sent the Quran as a criterion over these scriptures. We put everything against the Quran and we go going to interpret a verse is not in the Quran or similar to the Quran. We approach it as we approach the Quran, the understanding, the normal understanding, right? However, this is the interpretation of them, them, the people of the book themselves. This is how they interpret. This is not us. This is not Muslims argument. I posted the link and you can read it. Um, and explaining, and this is the interpretation of Rashi. So if you want like, I can read it for you. For when Ibrahim came from Mount Moriah, he received the news of Rebecca. They will explain it, how it's three years old, but you need to read it yourself. However, it's a long interpretation. But this is not our arguments because we believe on the prophets the best, right? And we agree with your interpretation. Right? We agree with this interpretation, but this is not our arguments, this is their arguments. And this is what's happened when you throw people houses, when your house and stones and your house is made of glass. This is stupid. Can I give a response to that? Uh, with all due respect, I really want to answer the question, so if I don't mind, Barakalafiq. So when it oh. comes to the age of Rebecca, I want to best ask Black before we move on. Black, you see the the link in top? Yeah, it's a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, Rashi. Rashi that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is a Jewish rabbi. Yeah, the same Jewish rabbi that says Jesus is not the Messiah. And you you understand their book more than them? So, uh, yes. In okay, certain yes. Good. Good so, I mean, but unless I you guys want to say that Rashi's hey, right hey. when he says that Jesus is not the Messiah. Amy, hey, before you go, I will let you, we'll let you speak. Of course he will say he's not a Messiah according yes. to your claim about Jesus. You no, say no, Jesus died, the Messiah will never die. Of course he will say he's not the Messiah. No, but, because no, but if Rashi he was the Messiah, he wrong. will never die. No, Rashi, Rashi believes that the Messiah, did die, or, that Jesus is not the Messiah at all. Yeah, because goes, because yeah, your on, claim on, because you your claim he Rashi. died. No, Rashi, you don't know what Rashi's belief about the Messiah is. He holds the, to the two Messiah beliefs that um, there's a Messiah of uh, the son of Joseph and the son of David, two Messiahs, and the son of Joseph will die according to that view of the of, of the Messiah. Um, so, word, so can I ask you something, bro? Jesus wow. is a Messiah word, at all. Word, wow. can I ask you something, Austin? Can I ask you something? So, so you guys, no, bro. In, in, in Judaism, on, right? Hold on, guys. I only let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Everybody, everybody, be calm on the stage so we can hear each other. Please. Yeah. Thank you. So, <clears throat> in, in uh, response to this about Rebecca being three, number one, it was very good that Black Sheep asked for a reference in the scripture because you guys don't have any. You don't have a reference in the scripture that says Rebecca was three. Instead, you have evidence of, you, well, one, it calls her a young woman, uh, says that she's old enough to be married, and uh, that she's uh, taking care of the sheep and and uh, uh, getting water out of the well, which a three-year-old cannot do. Right. This is all on the assumption. Right, right. Where, how about the age of Mary? How about uh, how about the age of Mary? No problem, no problem. Let's okay. pass Rebecca. Let's pass Rebecca. The, the, One the, second, Shadid. Shadid, please. Please. Shadid. When you do the math, that's why Brother Shadid. Brother Shadid, we get back to it. Wallahi, I promise you. I promise you we will get. Let's pass for now Rebecca. How about the age of Mary? Peace and blessings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No problem. So as as long as we... Because you know, How, you, you guys. What was a, What was her age? What was her age? Yeah, the, the Bible doesn't give her her age either. But what was her, her age according to you? Her, oh, so just, what was her age? Anas, can I answer? What you? was her age when she conceived Jesus? 
Can you, you give me a number? Uh, Can you, you give a number? The Bible doesn't give a number. But the Bible you don't have a number? The, the Bible says she was a woman uh, and not a little girl as when we read How the old the woman? When I tell you, when I... It, Anas, is it okay if I give you a full answer? Who is this please? man? Is that like... It's, 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 it's dog logic. Oh, it's oh my goodness. Oh. I don't know. I don't know how you do I'm, I'm answering smart, you in full. Huh? I don't know. Brother Shadid, over to you, brother. Thank you. Bro. He doesn't have a number, but he has an answer. Yes, exactly. So thank you. Um, so unlike unlike uh, when, when we go to like for for example, the uh, the age of Aisha issue, you have explicit sources that literally say she was We agree she, she was nine. nine. We agree she was nine. Listen to me. Do you have age in the Bible? Do you have no, age in the Bible? No, one right, second. Do you I listen to me? Okay. Okay, I will handle it, please. I will handle it. Shadid. Yeah, you can complain to the FIFA, no problem. This is the thing. Do you have do you have ruling? Do you have ruling? A certain ruling in your Bible that permits you want to call it child marriage? Go ahead. Call it child marriage. Show me a ruling. Okay, in your Bible prohibit this if you don't have that's mean it's open no problem you understand this no it doesn't but no problem you understand <coughs> this what, what was Mary's age? I, I disagree with your premise, Mary's age? but i'm going to what show you you cannot make an argument against islam unless if you have a direct ruling in your bible says look not you're not allowed to marry nine years old girls you're not allowed to do it if you don't have such a thing, then keep it silent and go back and tell me about the Messiah. I, I disagree, but um, it's the argument. I, I would like to. So, I would like to answer the Mary? first. Yeah, I would like to. I would like to answer the first question that you yeah, brought up about, Mary. about Mary. Mary. Uh, uh, is it okay if I speak? Why are you talking over me, Shadi? Relax. Because you're not answering the Re question. Relax, Shadi. Relax. You brought up a hadith. Relax, like, relax, what that please, got to do with the age of Mary? Please, 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 Everybody, 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 relax, relax. Bro, he ain't gonna answer the question. Right, right, right. We're gonna answer. Right, 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 right. Just, just do this like this, please, brothers. Uh, word. The, the question is simply: If you don't know, just say I don't know. Right? What was the age of Mary when she was when she got pregnant? That's right. that's I guess, that's the brothers want to hear. Is it okay, Amir? So if if I get know, a full minute, to no, answer. bro. This is not the question, the brother Amir. With all my respect. I, 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 I got this. I got this. Sound like him, I got this. Please. If you don't know, if you don't know the age oh. of Mary, just say, I don't know. But don't talk if you don't know. That's all we're saying. If you don't know, and you're going to, if you're going to talk, and you're just going to say a whole <laughs> lot of things, we don't want to hear that. We just want to know the specifics. What was the age of Mary? That's it. All right. So is it okay now that I get in, uh, I'm able to answer like at least a, for a minute without an interruption, Amir? That's all I'm asking for. Just one minute. Uh, let me, let, no, I want to say what he's going to say. I want to say what he's going to say. Look, we know, we know, we know, we know. You're going to say there are explicit hadith. It says that Aisha was six and Muhammad married here at nine. Yes, we know this. We know this. So no need for you to say it. Right. It's not, listen, it listen, listen. anybody come up on the stage, look, this is going to be the rule. If we asking you a question, we asking you a question. If you come up on the stage and you don't answer our question, but you speak towards Islam, I'm just going to kick you off the stage because you're not here. You're not here to have a conversation. You're here to attack. We already spoke about Muhammad marrying Aisha. Clearly, we already, before you even came in the room. So doing it, it won't, it, it won't do anything for you. I'm just letting you know that right now. Yeah. So my, my point is not about Aisha. So what age was I married? Thank you. So I'm going to answer that question. So the object the objection usually is bringing up Mary's Mary's age and things of this nature to try to we, say we need to hear a number, bro. Uh, bro, bro. We need to hear a number. What he told, in, in you're doing Bible, exactly what he said. You're doing exactly what you're doing. A bunch of talking. Just say the age, bro. What's the age? We need to hear a number. We no, you're not. No, you're not. You're giving us a roundabout. Give us an age, bro. Twelve, thirteen, like say a number. Amir, 
Amir, he literally cannot Shadid. stay off the, off the mute. Like he's I got afraid. it. I got it. Stop it. I got it. He's afraid. Don't worry about it. So all, can I, all can all I continue want, my all answer, want, No, listen, 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 word. All we want, if you know, you know. If you don't, <laughs> you don't. If you know, just give us the age. That's it. Thank you. So, unlike What's your explicit sources that say Aisha was nine, Brother said he'd wait, brother. Throw him out. He has a he's talking about how deep again. Why is he talking about how deep again? Idiot. Throw him down. What a sorry ass idiot you are. Throw him down. You don't want to have that conversation. So I've been trying to I've been trying to say one thing. I've been holding it in this whole time. So when it comes to the age of Rebecca, okay, being three years old at her at her marriage with Isaac, this is something which obviously is not Look, so what he always says is something called the exact word fallacy because they don't have no verse in the whole entire 60 to 83 versions of the Bible where Jesus Muslim himself cowards, says he's God and worship him, but they still believe he's God and worship him. So I'm, I'm saying, saying what, he he and what he's doing, what he's committing is the exact word fallacy because from a logical perspective, if it is deduced, okay, if it's deduced logically from events that happen in the Bible, you can accept it. So that's the reality when it comes to Rebecca and her age to Isaac. It doesn't say Rebecca was three. It is deduced from events that are found in Genesis and so on and so forth. To de deduce logically that she is three when she married Isaac. And if there's anything that goes. Muslim cowards 101. They try to get on a brother who joined their stage his name, uh, by the name of Black Sheep, who wasn't going to be a... Um, it uh, didn't seem like he was ready specifically to address uh, directly the uh, the arguments they were bringing up. Am, am I am I audible, you all? You guys can hear me. Let me know if you guys can hear me. And make make sure I'm audible. Make sure I'm audible. Give me a one to make sure I'm audible. Okay, good, 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 good. So I hop on the stage. I knew it wasn't going to last long because they're afraid of me. They literally pee in their pants when I hop on the stage with them. They piss in their pants. And um, and so now that I'm ready to address their objections, notice, guys, did you guys see how quickly they got off the Rebecca thing? Did you guys see how quickly they got off the Rebecca thing? Did y'all notice that? As soon as I identified that Rebecca is called a woman, that Rebecca is going to the well and getting water and taking care of the sheep and things of this nature. Did y'all see how quick they got off the? They said, "Oh no, okay, let, let's forget, let's forget the, uh, let's forget Rebecca. Let's go to Mary. Let's forget the, let's forget the, uh, the Rebecca issue. Let's go to Mary. Why? Can't you acknowledge that you were wrong before we move on? The goalpost keeps on shifting, and then once they, what, what's the age of Mary? What, what's the age of Mary? Oh, the Bible doesn't give the age of Mary, but it calls her a woman. It says that she's a woman. Start getting cut off, yada, yada, yada. Oh, well, well, well. now the goalpost shifts to show us in your Bible where marrying a little girl is, it, it goes against the Bible. That it's, it's, it's prohibited to marry a little girl. It's prohibited to marry a little girl. That's now, so we dealt with, we dealt with Rebecca. We dealt with Mary because they have no scriptures. Notice how when we talk about Aisha and their sources and Muhammad saying, why would you get with a grown woman? Why not get with a little girl so that you can play with her and she can play with you? We quote their sources that say these things. And the Muslim will respond to Muhammad saying, oh, well, you know, I don't I wanted to marry a woman to take care of my daughters. I don't want to get a girl the same age as my little girls. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. So, so then, um, I'm not. I'm not in the app anymore, guys. They kick. They kicked me. They kicked me. Uh, they kicked me out. So then, and they turned hand raising off too, so that uh, so that uh, I couldn't raise my hand anymore. Anyway, so so after we identify, okay, your explicit sources say that she was nine when she when Muhammad hopped on her and climbed on top of her. She was nine years old, six when uh six years old when he married her. Six years old when he married her, nine years old when he climbed on top of her and penetrated her. That's what your sources say explicitly. But now what, what, what do we hear from the Muslims? Oh, well, 
no, there's no explicit verse that says Rebecca was three, but what the, what happens is they deduce that she was three. Who? Where? From what? From what source? Stop it. This is how desperate you Mohammedans are. You're desperate. You are desperate to save face and put a put on a bandage of your on your PDF file prophet. So now, God logic show us in the Bible where it's, it goes against marrying marrying little girls. Look at how have look at how they have to defend pedophilia. You could you're only a Muslim if you want to. Do, only Muslims are uh, will defend pedophilia. Well, maybe not only Muslims. I can't even say that. But man, yeah, the PDF file. Close. <laughs> but okay, let's let's. And I was just about to show them. I was just about to show them the Bible verse. I knew I knew I wouldn't get there. But they 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 moved that goalpost because they thought that I couldn't show them this. They thought that I couldn't show them this. It's First Corinthians chapter seven. Verse 36, but, but if any man thinks that he is not acting properly and honorably toward his virgin daughter <clears throat> by not permitting her to marry, whatever, if she is past her youth, it must be so. Let him do as he wishes. He does not sin. Let her marry. If she's what? Past her youth. And it must be so. We don't have we don't have this problem in our Bible. The Bible is clear. It must be so that it must be so that she is past her youth. So they can't handle Rebe the Rebecca argument. They can't handle the Mary argument. They have no sources. They hate when we quote the, the Hadiths about Aisha being nine years old, playing with dolls when uh, Muhammad mounted her. And then we have in our Bible, it explicitly says that it must be so that she has to be past her youth in order for her to be married. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse 36. Stop it. Stop it. And just for that, let's go ahead and run through a few of our favorite hadiths, shall we? Watch when I put in. Oh, look, <laughs> that's already there. <laughs> that was already that was automatically there, y'all. Nine years old. Let's see what we find. Sahih Bukhari, 5133, that the prophet married her when she was six years old and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. And so on and so forth. Married her six years old, consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, remained with her till, her de uh, till his death. Six years old again, Consummated the marriage at nine. Six years old, consummated the marriage when she was nine. All of these Sahi, Sunan Nasai, Sahi, Sahi Abu Kari, Sahi, Sahi. Six years old when he got married, had intercourse with me. Y'all see that? I love how they put it in this one. Sunan Abu Dawood, 2121. 21, 21. He had intercourse with me. This is not Aisha talking herself. When I was nine years old, don't you? They wish that they had a verse where uh, Rebecca or Mary was, was said that they had uh, that Joseph, for example, Mary's husband, Joseph had sex with me when I was 12. They wish they had a verse like that. They wish they had a verse saying, uh, um, Isaac married Rebecca and slept with her when she was three years old or married her at three, had sex with her when she was six. 
they wish that they had explicit statements like that where they can pull this out. They wish because it'll save face. It'll save face for them where they can play the you have the same problem game. The you have the same problem game. Let's continue because we haven't even gotten to my favorite one yet. <clears throat> Where is it at? Where is it at? Nine years old, six years old. Oh, here's the seven-year-old one. Const uh, married her when she was seven. Some say six. But look, it's consistent that he had sex with her when she was nine years old. Sahi, Sunan Ibn Majah. Look at how disgusting this is. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old, and he was taken to her, uh, and he was taken to his house. I'm thinking she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine. Guess what was with her? And her dolls were with her. And when he died, she was 18 years old. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We all know this already, but this is just a little, it's fun to go over, to go over it again. We're, we're creatures of repetition. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Omar said, the old Sahi is the new Daif. <laughs> Here comes that bus. Hey, Omar, listen, we need to put that on a shirt. The old Sahi is the new Daif. Mash Yeshua. <laughs> she still was playing with dolls when she was taken to him as a bride and he consummated the marriage with her. Playing with dolls, ladies and gents. They wish they had a verse like this in the Bible. They wish they had a verse like 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36, that says that she must be past her youth in order for her to be married off. They wish they had a verse like that. But instead, what do they have? That Aisha was playing with dolls. What else? What else do they have? Surprise. Surprise. There's no way in your right mind, if you are a man of character with some semblance of the image of God on you, that you can stay in this uh, stay in this religion and think that this is from God. And those of your women who have passed the age of monthly courses, for them, the idda, the prescribed period, if you have doubts, is three months. And for those who have no courses, i.e., guess what? They're still immature. Their idda is three months likewise. What? You guys have it in your Quran, in the actual book that you say is Allah's word, that you can have sex with little girls. You can marry and have sex with little girls. That's what your religion teaches. You wish you had a verse like 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36. You wish you had verses in, in your Quran that upholds and protects the virtue of children. You wish you had verses like that in your book. You wish you had verses like that in your book. Come on, man. And we've all seen that we've been over this stuff before. We've been over this stuff before. I.e., they're still immature. This is what your scholars interpret. Your translators, this is how they interpret that. So not only does it blank, blankly say it, but you can marry and have sex with little girls and divorce them. Divorce them before, their, before puberty. Before puberty. Before puberty. And in case, you know, someone's visiting this stream who has never seen this stuff, 
just in case you come across this and you've never seen this in your life. You've never seen it. Let me show you what their scholars say. This will be quick. Let me show you what their scholars say. Jelalane. And as for those women who no longer expect to menstruate, if you have any doubts, their waiting period, their prescribed waiting period, shall be three months. And also for those who have not yet menstruated. Why? Why, Jella Lane? Because of their young age. Their period shall also be three months. So you can get with the little girl, have sex with the little girl, and divorce the little girl, and she has to wait three months just in case the off chance that she might be pregnant, just in case before she can move on to another man. <clears throat> she has to wait three months. That's her waiting period. Just to make, just in case by the off chance, the little girl who has not yet menstruated might be pregnant. Alhamdulillah. All right, we have Arjunis. He says, God bless you, Brother GL. Please explain to these Muslims about uh, Numbers 3118, trying to justify child marriage is sick. Absolutely, yeah, we'll go into that too. We can go into that too. We can go into that too. But notice, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know this. You guys are an educated uh, audience. We, are, we already know we've been through this. You guys have seen us have conversations like this already with people. So you guys know this. You guys know how this goes. I was supposed to go to the gym before I saw that room. And, uh, <clears throat> but I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I was supposed to go to the gym. I couldn't help it. Um, notice how they have, when they try to jump to Mary, they jump to Mary who didn't have sex, who was a virgin. And they tried to somehow point to that, like, see, look, Mary was young when she got pregnant with Jesus. Even if that was the case, let's say she was 12 years old or whatever. She wasn't. Let's just say she was 12 years old or whatever. Right. When God impregnated her with Jesus, when the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, overshadowed her. She was a virgin. There was no sex ha uh, uh, to be had here. So they're pointing to a a uh, a holy act by God in the most purest form with a virgin who's remaining a virgin, a miraculous a miraculous act of God, they try to point to, to say, Muhammad is okay. Mary was young when she got pregnant with Jesus, as if she had got pregnant through sexual means. This is how desperate these Muslims are. Desperate. Desperate. If you're not a Christian, you don't have to be a Christian. Just be somebody on the outside looking in, watching how these Muslims try to back up their religion, the tactics that they try to use, what they try to rely on, the straw mans, the, the, um, the U2 fallacy, you, you got it too type of thing in order to try to save themselves. It doesn't work. It does not work, right? <clears throat> it does not work. It does not work. Said, I have that app. Thank you for the super chat. I have the app, but I can't use it. I don't know how it works. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, all you gotta do is um well you can tell me what your what your challenges are. Let me know. I can I can help you out. I can help you out. Let's go to numbers 31. Do 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 do. Let's go to Numbers 31, ladies and gents. How desperate they are. Desperate, desperate. Poor, poor Mohammedans. Poor, poor Mohammedans. Poor Mohammedans. They have no problem having people up there that don't know how to combat their arguments, that don't know how to turn the tables on them. They have no problem with that. At all, no problem. 
But we, we all knew that I wasn't going to last long on that stage. But it's just, it's fun to me. It's fun to me. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Number 31, right? That's what they try to do. Vengeance on Midian. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, avenge the people of Israel on the Midianites. Afterward, you shall gather to your people. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people saying, arm men from, uh, from among you for the war that they may go against Midian to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. You shall send a thousand from each of the tribes of Israel to the war. So notice, what's the context? It's God's vengeance and his judgment against Midian. Not like where Muhammad goes uh, and just goes village to village pillaging and um, ravaging the villages, killing the women and children. And when they're killed and the Muslims ask about them, he says, oh, well, they're from among them. They're, they're from among them. So what? This is God's holy judgment on the people, on the Midianites, <clears throat> for what they did to Israel, how they led them to sin and such and such, right? Now, so let's skip down to the relevant part. So they warred against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian with the rest of their slain, you know, names the names of the five kings of Midian. Okay, let's drop down. And Moses was very angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of the war of the hundreds who had come from their service in war. Moses said to them, have you let all the women live? Behold, these on, Bal on Balaam's advice caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in the incident at, of Peor. And so the plague came among the congregation of the Lord. Radar Apologetics, are you here? If you're here, you're more than welcome to, uh, to come up, brother. If you're here, let me know if you're here and I'll personally send you the link. <clears throat> and so the plague came, upon the, uh, came among the congregation of the Lord. So what's the context again? The vengeance of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, not just on the males, but on the women as well, because they led Israel into sin against God, treachery against the Lord, it says. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known a man by lying with them. But all the young girls who have not known a man by lying with them, keep alive for yourselves. Oh, here it is. This means that God is ordering them to rape little girls, for them to have sex with little girls. Where does it say that? Nowhere does it say to have sex with the little girls here, but to keep them in their camp for themselves. Now they will be, they will be joined to the Israelite nation, raised in the Israelite nation under the command and law of God. And if they want to marry at the uh, uh, at the appropriate age, they can marry you, or so on and so forth, or go out their own way. But they will be raised in the Israelite nation under the law of the true God and out of this debauchery that they were going to grow up into and committing these type of acts. Nowhere here does this talk about any type of sexual relations with these kids, with these young girls. They're desperate. They're desperate. But imagine, imagine if the verse said, and sleep with them, like we see explicitly in the Quran's text or in the Hadith text. What, like, like, this is how desperate they are. Like, for example, let me just give you an example. Let me give you an example. A similar situation um, when it comes to Muhammad, how they attacked um, a place called Altas. They attacked a place called Altas. And Allah allowed them to have sex with married women. Now, am I deducing this? Or does it explicitly say this in their, in their sources? 
Let's see. <clears throat> Jamia Termidi, Hassan, 11.32. We got some captives on the day of Altas, and they had husbands among their people. So the captives had husbands. Their husbands were still alive. They mentioned that to the, to the messenger of Allah. So the following was revealed. And women already married. So it's talking about women that are forbidden for you. So women already married, except those who your right hand possess. You can't have sex with women that are already married, except the ones who you capture through war, the ones who you own after capturing them. You can have sex with these married women, even with their husbands still alive. Let's go to a, a more detailed one. Let's see here. This is chapter 4, verse 24, by the way. This is giving us the reason why chapter 4, verse 24 was revealed. <clears throat> Let's see here. Here it is. Sunan Nisai. This is Sahih. 3333. Three, three. Muslims love the number three. It was narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Kurdi that the prophet of Allah sent an army to Al-Tas. They met the army, fought them, and prevailed over them. They acquired female prisoners who had husbands among the idolaters. The Muslims felt reluctant to be intimate with them. What? So the Muslims had a sense of, they had a conscience. They was like, huh, I don't think we can do this. They, they're still married. It wouldn't be right for us to just have have our way with them while they're married, right? Then Allah, who's full of mercy, the mighty, the sublime, the one who's full of grace and truth, Allah, the merciful, the most merciful, alhamdulillah, he says, he revealed, because of their doubt about having sex with married women who they captured, Allah wanted to clear their doubts and clear their conscience. And he said, also, forbidden are women already married, except those slaves whom your right hand possesses. Meaning this is permissible for once they have completed their idda. That's a ruling. So they're able to have sex with married women explicitly here. They can be intimate with them. It's explicit as long as they are captured through war. As long as they're captured through war, as long as they become an ownership, a property of the Muslim. It doesn't matter if they're married or not. They can have sex with them. Alhamdulillah, he's the most gracious, most merciful. Do you guys want to know what some of... Uh, the like answers or I get to this is, you know, when you when you go through war, you know, and, and, the, and the husbands and the men are defeated, you know, it's merciful to, you know, like you can't leave the women. You can't just leave them stranded. You know, they're, they'll be without home and without uh, shelter and no money and things of this nature, no one to take care of them. So it's a mercy. It's a mercy from Allah that we can rape them in front of their husbands. Welcome to Islam, ladies and gents. By the way, if you're here, listening, chilling, I miss you guys. Um, you guys can go ahead and hit that like button, please. Over 220 of us in here. So let's get the likes up to 220. Let's get the likes up to 220. Let me put this back up so you guys can see. Hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as you guys know, um, I am uh, on the mission on the road to get this ministry full time. So I have my Patreon rolling across the screen right there if you guys I would love to support the ministry financially. That is a great way to do it. Um, for those who give through Patreon and um, and uh, you know give give through PayPal and things of this nature, uh, that is also 
a great way because it goes directly to me. I don't have to wait for the end of the month to get that. So those of you who give through Zelle and give through PayPal, please do not stop doing that because that helps me along the way so much. It helps keep me afloat. Um, so all my links are in the description, ladies and gentlemen, my PayPal, the Patreon, everything is in the description. Let me go ahead and pin the Patreon um, in the comment section on YouTube. But yeah, we're on the road. I have We have 35 patrons now. We have 35 patrons now. Um, it's amazing. Um, so we're growing. We're growing, guys. So let's keep it coming. Um, I have a $10, a $10 uh, tier. I have a $20 tier, $50, $100 tier, and things like this. So, um, but I haven't, I haven't been able to really get on the streams like that because, you know, I've been trying to, you know, trying to work more and things of this nature. So I'm really trying to get away from that eventually so that, uh, so that I can do this full time live stream full time make videos full time amen so i really appreciate all of you guys though i really appreciate all of you guys that have been supporting the ministry so far i really do appreciate it man showing that you guys believe in me and the gift god has given me in this ministry it means the world to me it means the world to me so <clears throat> so go ahead uh sign up with the patreon uh moderators if you're here if you guys could put that link in the in the chat on YouTube, let me go, let me go ahead and get it myself. Let me go ahead and get it myself, myself, myself. Mm. But that's how desperate our Muslim friends are. These antichrists. That's how desperate they are. So Numbers thirty one says to keep the little children for yourselves. Keep them alive for yourselves. They can live among you. While their sources say explicitly that they can have sex with little kids, divorce little kids, um, and have sex with married captive women whose husbands are still alive. Because Allah is that gracious and merciful. There's no comparison. You cannot compare the true God of the universe, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and his virtue and his holiness and his justice with the demon of Islam called that they call Allah. The shaitan of Islam that they call Allah. <clears throat> Real talk. Let me get this up. Let me get this up. <clears throat> but yeah, we're at 33. We're at 33,000 subs, y'all. We are growing. We are growing. So Thanks to everyone for sharing the channel, making clips and videos and stuff like that. Um, all that kind of stuff, man. It, it really goes a long way sharing it on TikTok and Instagram. You know, that really goes a long way, guys. So we are building this ministry together. It's not me, not just me. It's God through us building the ministry, getting the word out, getting the truth out and casting down all logic, wisdom, and imagination of the world that tries to write, raise itself above Christ. That's God logic. But yeah, so um, since this isn't, uh, you know, the regular God Logic stream, if you guys, I see that some of you guys have questions, you guys can come up. Oops, I didn't mean to stop sharing the screen, but whatever. You guys can come up. Let me see. Here's a link. So I saw um, Kingzilla, you have a question. Yeah, that's exactly what they do, Anonymous. They cherry pick stuff and do not provide uh, any context. Exactly. Exactly. So there's a link. You guys can come on up if you guys have a question. You want to add something to the to the discussion. And of course, if you're a Muslim, you're more than welcome to join. You're more than welcome to join up and let's talk. 
We don't have to talk about the child marriage stuff. I just wanted to get that off because of how cowardly the Muslims were on that subject. Straight up cowards. And you guys see this stuff. This is this is what this is the best they have on uh, on, on on Clubhouse. How you doing, Ariel? Good to see you. Good to see you. <clears throat> God bless you. Make sure we hit that like button, guys. Let's get the likes up to 200. We're at 170 something right now. Let's get the likes up to 200. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's push it in the uh in the uh in the algorithm. Hit that like button. Thanks, Truth. That's right. JC, for the ministry, God bless all. Thank you so much, JC. I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. No worries here. <laughs> Avery, you a cool cat, little brother. Keep up the good work exposing Islamic madness. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> How you doing? Can Hello, you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thanks for having me on. I've just started following you, let's say about a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to puff you up too much, but you, I definitely appreciate <laughs> your, your approach to things. Um, I started watching these uh, verses islam streams through christian prince i guess it came on the algorithm mm. and then That's funny. yeah he's uh he's great <laughs> yeah he's alone yeah he's uh he's alone <laughs> um, yeah. that's right yeah. that's right yeah so i and you know on that note like uh he's got his own approach he's um he talks to his people and his his language and his manner um mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, that's peer, peer learning, that kind of thing. So I appreciate that. But sometimes that gets to be too much, too, for folks that are not, you know, from the same background, you know, that kind of aggressive tone kind of gets to be a bit much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I appreciate your patience. If I, can I drop some names on your stream? Is that okay? Sure. Thaddeus is another one that I like. He's, Thaddeus. He has yeah. reason answers. Yes. Yeah. He's yeah. Uh, Good both of you have that same spirit. You, both of you try to keep it as Christ-centered as possible, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate it, brother. I do. Um, yeah, it's so, yeah, it is. I mean, God bless you. Keep on keeping on. You, you know, you guys have the strength and, and, the, and the love and, therefore, the patience that some of us just can't quite muster, you know. <laughs> so keep on keeping on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a little tough. I'll tell you that. It's a little tough, especially you know, you got these antichrists that come, they come, they yeah. come on, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, go ahead. And and you guys taught me. Let me continue with that line. If you guys have taught me that, you know, I'm I'm quick to judge. I'm like, oh, you know what? Cut them off, pluck them out. These guys, you know, they're they're a waste of time. But you guys yeah. stay with it, and after a while, you see some of them softening up. So that's a mm -hmm. real good thing for us to see you know to kind yeah, of soften sure. our hearts too for sure for sure can yeah. i play the devil's advocate here with you though yeah let's have fun okay um so let's see i'm cradle orthodox but i wasn't raised in their church um but i've been to seminary a couple of times and i've been to a seminary abroad and so on and so forth and right now i'm kind of uh let's call it in flux so I've got all these challenges that I'm facing and listening to you guys, the, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's gotten me appreciating the theological debates and theological circles and, and so on. And it's got me thirsting for it. Mm. But I've also got that question, that yearning, burning thing about being staunch in our stance of who God is, of defining God. And I know it's horrible. Like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate here because that's, I'm sure there's Muslims right now listening like, yeah, I see what I mean. You know, Christians don't have the answer. But, I mean, that's, isn't it scriptural to 
to not be like the public interest to, to, to ponder tries to say, I know, I, I know who God is and I know what the right way is and all that. I mean, what I struggle with is that is how do we, how do we take that stance without falling into pride and, and, and being the devil's advocate ourselves in the process? So what, say that question again. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough line of thought. Basically what I'm, I'm asking is if we don't actually know God's fullness personally, I mean, for example, biblically, nobody's actually seen God. So we don't actually fully know who, what God is or who God is or, or that kind of thing. If that's true, then how can we um, assert with with absolute authority the definition of God and sometimes even with passion, with you know, sometimes we even get visceral about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so... It's, you're, you're right that we cannot fully comprehend God. <clears throat> but what we have is obviously the revelation of Christ and how he revealed God to us, right? It's through Christ that we know God and how he has explained God. The Bible says in John 1, 18, no one has seen God except the, uh, the only begotten God who is at his side. He has explained him. He has made him known. So it's through the revelation that's given to us that we can hold tight to with confidence and assurity. So um, it's these things that Christ reveals that we can that we can like be dogmatic on. Um, but certain deeper issues we shouldn't be so dogmatic on. It should be open for discussion and things of this nature, right? Um, you know, certain things that aren't necessarily explained by Christ or through the revelation, but we have the fundamentals of who and what God is. Um, and those are things that we can hold on to without a doubt. And if someone co comes against what Christ has already revealed, we know that they're that they're in falsehood, they're in error, they need to be corrected. That makes sense? Yeah, perfect sense, well said. That quote you said, that's from John 1, 18? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. John chapter 1, verse 18. Wow, that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. to the most high. But yeah, he, Christ explains them. So we hold on to those, to, to his revelation. Yeah, those are just the two biggest things that um, were kind of playing with me. I don't want to take up too much of your time here, but yeah, we just... Um, just the whole debate, you know, to be honest, following mm -hmm. these streams, uh, like I said, I've, you know, been in, out of, in and out of seminary, and uh, right now I'm kind of away from the church, which is not a good good place to be mm -hmm. for, for different reasons, both uh, yeah. for personal reasons and so on. Yeah. Um, so these streams have actually brought me back to... Uh, like you said, this dialogue, the inner dialogue, and then this yeah. uh, contemplating what God is and so on. Mm -hmm. But it's also done the other. Like some of the arguments that I hear actually challenge my faith. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything I can think of offhand. It's probably a good thing, but you know, I don't <laughs> want to. I don't want to spread doubt, right? Oh well, no! Like it's a uh, it's it's good to 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 receive challenges because then you go into deeper study, you know? That's, that's how, that's what kind of threw me into more of the Bible and certain concepts because of objections that were brought to me that, you know, that I couldn't answer at the time. But through deeper study and, you know, obviously the Holy Spirit taking me where he wants, where he wants me and guiding me and getting me answers and, you know, the fullness of that knowledge and stuff like that, it helped. So like it's it's good that you get challenged, and it's it's but it's how you handle getting challenged. It's making sure that you go deep and you study those and seek for the answer because the answers are there, for sure. The answers are there. If um, I mean you don't have to come up with anything now, but what's up, Truth? Uh, if if you have anything in the future 
later on and you have a question because I, I i'll have more streams like this where i can invite you guys up and we could just talk and oh, you know encourage that. each other um <clears throat> you know you can come up and, and bring up bring up you know certain objections that you heard or or you know certain challenges that you are having trouble finding an answer to okay and, okay i'll do that i appreciate yeah, that and i'll have me or even some other brothers who are more knowledgeable than i am come on and help try to give answers Okay, and if I may, let me uh, correct myself here. I don't want to, I don't want Christian Press get the idea that I'm kind of bashing him. I'm not. I love the guy. Oh no, you like you, you. You was clear that you like. Uh, you love Christian yeah. Prince. He's you awesome. Know? I, I think yeah. we all love him. All right. <laughs> thank yes, thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Keep on. Keeping Absolutely. On. God bless, man. God bless. And thanks for tuning in. You're always welcome. All right. What's up, brother? What's up, Trump? al haq al haq Exactly. <laughs> so, brother, how you been doing? Been all right, man. Like I said, I was I was supposed to be I was supposed to be at the gym until I saw that room on Clubhouse, bro. Um, the the room title the room title I don't know if you can see. Well, yeah, you're probably not blocked yet by the Muslims, but the room title is "Did the Devil Acknowledge Jesus as God?" And yeah. when I went in there, they was talking to a Christian trying to bring up Rebecca and things of this nature. Uh, so, yeah, we I, I had fun with that. Got kicked out, obviously, and yeah. uh, just had to stream it. So I had no, some no, no. fun. I, I actually saw, first, like, I saw your stream. I thought it was the room made by you. I didn't read the title. And I was looking for it on Clubhouse. I couldn't find it. Then I just saw it was a, it was a Muslim room. Then I said, nah, I'm not going to join. Because I know the people moderating it, right? Though mm -hmm. Anas, A, Amir, they're all liars. They just lie yeah. and lie and lie and lie all the yeah. time. And when you ever, when, and when you try to point, like when you make an argument against our religion, and then you find out that Islam teaches the thing that they're accusing our religion of teaching. <clears throat> when you try to point it to their religion, they'll go like, ah, oh, you're pointing to Islam because you're scared because you can't defend Christianity. So they'll never talk about Islam. Never. And they'll just keep changing the subject. These guys, are, I, I, I've debated these guys. They're just idiots. So, but yeah. That's hilarious. Um, you, brother, so you had, you had a chance to talk with the Nas before? Oh, I've had one. This You, you wouldn't even imagine what happened. So mm -hmm. Anas first claim so first he said this was what happened we were there was a muslim who i was in a room and he said that according to the bible jesus wasn't crucified and then i and then i started debunking them right and then anas said to me jesus didn't go to the cross willingly i showed him <laughs> I, I showed him i showed him i showed him that christ did go willingly but in his mind he thought when I said that Christ went willingly, he, he thought I, I, I was saying that Christ walked to the cross willingly. He wasn't arrested. He just went to the cross walking willingly. No, Christ was arrested. That was the whole point. But he went willingly because Christ says, I lay down my life, but I can take it back. No one takes it from me, right? So, mm -hmm. and then I showed him this. And then we showed him that Christ was crucified. And then they forgot about that. They moved on. He went to this Muslim argument that's popular on Clubhouse. We know when Christ shows his hands and his sides, right? To show that he was wounded on the cross. Yeah. That's he said that. And he, he tried to use that verse where Christ says, look at me. I'm alive to show that Christ didn't die. I told him, okay, look at how when Thomas says, I will only believe when I see the marks on his hand, etc. Then Christ shows that he would, the marks on his hand and his sides, that he was crucified. Then Thomas believes. He said, no, show me where the verse has wounds. The verse doesn't say he showed his wounds exactly. So that means it's <laughs> Then you wouldn't believe what happened. Oh. I, I, I kept on, we kept on reading. And then we went to the part where Christ said these things had to happen. The things in the Old Testament about me had to be fulfilled. That the Messiah would suffer and then he would rise on the third day. And then he said, he said, oh, but this doesn't, this, this doesn't mean he died. Rising on the third day doesn't mean you're dead. Mm -hmm. Even though it clearly says right, or the Messiah would be raised from the dead on the third day. Then he changed the subject. And then he said, okay, now let's go to those verses in the Old Testament where, that's, uh, where this says that. So he just yeah. kept changing the topic. So Anas is a complete idiot. He's a complete dumb idiot. Like, I don't of like course. talking to him at all. I hate talking to him. Like, he twists the Bible. He he never goes to the Quran. He hates going to talking about his own religion. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what they all do. They they none of them like talking about the Quran, dude. What? <laughs> none of them like talking about the Quran. None of them like yep. talking about the hadiths. None of them like talking about anything. Um we have a uh, uh anonymous in the in the in the chat. 
uh, talking about Isaiah 42. If you want, you can come up anonymous and present that case about Isaiah 42. <clears throat> Oh, oh man. man. I don't know why in the chat. You guys can come on up, man, and talk to us, man. We don't bite. But uh we just had to get this off. This was just a funny one. Well, I should I should rename the stream though. What should I rename the stream? Mm, I don't know. Maybe you should just do conversation uh, talking to viewers or something, chatting with viewers, something like that. Because mm -hmm. I mean for sure. Or yeah. just write Muslims, bring your objections. Maybe a Muslim that gets this on his feet will go, oh, okay, this is by opportunity. Then he gets maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean, let me work on that. I'm gonna change it right now. Change it you know, right it's, now. Avery. You know, it's weird. You know, Isaiah, right? Is literally the most to me is the most clear book in the whole Bible that is basically saying Jesus is the Messiah. But yet, Muslims love to use Isaiah to disprove that Christ is the Messiah. But Isaiah says the opposite of that. But they still go to Isaiah. Of and course. then when you show them from Isaiah that Christ is the Messiah, they change the topic. They say, oh, okay, show me other parts of the Bible where it says that. Then they abandon Isaiah when they see that they're wrong. Always. <laughs> of course, man. That's what they have to do. They, they, they're cherry pickers. They would rather quote Satan. They would rather quote Satan in Psalm 91, how Satan used Psalm 91. They would rather quote that. Uh, in the way that Satan used it um, to prove that Jesus didn't die and, and and ignore the messianic prophecies about him, they they would they would uh, they would rather do that. This is why I would I I would love for a Muslim to come up one day and show me the messianic prophecies that they that they uh, that they feel Jesus fulfills in the Old Testament. I would love to see them go through that and and show me what prophecies Jesus fulfilled. And what are messianic prophecies? I would love to see that. These dudes, and, they don't know nothing about Messiah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, man. And and when they like to play this game, oh, ancient uh, rabbis disagree with you. Their interpretations or whatever. King Cyrus and this. You know, when you go back, there are actually certain rabbis that are respected that actually talk about how those verses in Isaiah talk about the Messiah. There's certain exactly. rabbis that interpret it like that. So exactly. Yeah. They uh, uh, authoritative rabbis say that these passages are messianic, and you go into the targums and says that it, it says that these passages are messianic, so they can't get around it. And if they want to go with these rabbinic, um, <clears throat> with these rabbinic interpretations, then they have to just go ahead and reject Jesus as the Messiah, since these same rabbis that they're quoting are are going against Jesus being the Messiah. They have to go and, against them and just say, okay, you know what? Yeah, we, we take rabbinic uh, interpretation, so therefore Jesus is not the Messiah. That's what they have to do if they're consistent, exactly. but they're not. They're not consistent. These are cherry-picking hamsters and they, who love to shuffle and kiss stones. And this is what they keep doing. And even when you talk to rabbinic Jews, right, they they – a lot of these rabbinic Jews, I've talked to one called God's lawyer, and he's, he was playing this word game with me, right? For, but from what I've seen about these Jews and Muslims, they will quote rabbis that fits their narrative, but the rabbis that are also respected that talk about this being Messianic prophecies, they'll just throw it away. They'll come up with an excuse or say, oh, no, 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 no. And I, I mean, they, yeah, like you said, they're cherry picking. They're basically choosing what suits them, and they just throw away the, the rest of the sources. But even if the rabbis didn't talk about this, when we read those verses, the context is simple it's talking about the messiah it's the redeemer there's no other person that that's talking about i remember when you were talking to az i don't know if you remember az when you were talking about king cyrus and <laughs> yeah, israel being the, exactly but when you were reading the verses slowly you you the only and you, you you i mean i already knew this but you helped me understand that it can only be about the messiah it can mm -hmm. only be about the messiah but either way, brother, um, do you remember that verse that I showed you, Proverbs 30, verse 4, where it says that God has a name, right? Uh, I'm sorry, that God has a son. I'm sorry, God has a son, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know Psalms 2, verse 12? <laughs> yes, I love the one that says to kiss the son lest he be angry and stuff like that, right? And it says that for, it says kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way for his wrath is quickly kindled. Mm -hmm. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Wait, I thought we we're only supposed to take refuge in God, true? No, oh yeah, for exactly. Mm. So mm, I mean So we have to take refuge in the sun? 
who is this? Un un unless his wrath will be kindled against us. Wow. Maybe this maybe the son is King Cyrus. Who knows, man? Maybe, <laughs> maybe the son is King Cyrus. <laughs> maybe the son is King Cyrus. Maybe the son is King Cyrus. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But even so, brother, when th this just gets worse. Do you know Psalms 110, verse 1? Have you read this? Yes, yes, one? of course. Where it brother. says, The Lord said unto my Lord, set my right hand until I make your enemies the, thy footstool. And then yeah. Christ quotes that verse and says that he is the one in that passage. That is the str most straightforward thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Not only indicating the, the Trinity, because he said, My Lord said unto my Lord, but that Christ is is in there because christ is claiming to be the one that's the right hand of god the most clear passage ever but then they will say oh where is the word trinity you don't find anything they, they will literally play these games and i and even if you show them they will i don't know what's going on they will find some way of changing everything and it just annoys me at this point oh, yeah. i recently got into clubhouse and and i'll tell you my experience with these rooms are terrible these people are all liars they're all awful i haven't met a muslim and like, I went to a Muslim room and I and I enjoyed the conversation. All of them, pessimists. Yeah, it's not gonna happen, man. Let me give a shout out to a special brother, Chris Claus. Oh, Imam Chris Claus in the building. He's probably probably at work, just uh, tuning in for a second. Man, thank you so much. He says, "God bless you, brother. Love you. Say hi to Mama God Logic and Dad God Logic." <laughs> Mama got logic. We'll see this, so uh, she'll say hi. I'll tell Dad too. But man, that's that's awesome. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you, Chris. And hope you're having a good day, man. I hope you're having a good day. Oh, he's on break. Yep. Hopefully everything's good and you're blessed and protected at work. In Jesus' name, brother. Have you seen that Islamic book called Persuasion in Solving the Words of Abis Shuja by Muhammad bin Ahmed Al Sherbini? Have yeah. you seen that book? And so there's a so in that book, in part two, page two three seven, I can send you the link. It talks about how Muslims are allowed to eat the dead bodies of kafirs and believers. And I've, I've heard that before. I've heard. Uh, I've I'll, heard, I'll, I'll I send you the was, link here. I think it was um, Rob Christian that went over that before. Did yeah, yeah. I, I I put the link here in the private chat. But if you click the link, it's a Shia online library. But the source in itself is that oh, it, it can be it's all it can be part of the Sunnah, right? It's just in the website and if you just keep reading down the whole thing it talks about how muslims are allowed to eat the, de the dead flesh of unbelievers let me just find the reference very quick for people here who are curious let me just find it um oh this is hilarious these muslims have a room uh saying the kaaba is in the bible isaiah 6, oh, 6 and 7. this is hilarious let's see if we can get some uh get some fun going on in here Oh man, not this again. This is this is hilarious. No nah, man, not this again. I've I've heard already those arguments of the couples in the Bible. Well, well <laughs> when whenever when you when you go to their verses, so-called verses, it's never what they actually say. When you read the whole thing, it's completely irrelevant to Islam and the Kaaba. Oh yeah, for sure. Even as I say. Hold on, let's let's see what they let me see if I can get this up. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Guys, don't forget to hit that like button. We're about to invade another Muslim room saying that the Kaaba is in Isaiah chapter six, verse six and seven. Isaiah chapter six. Where Isaiah gets the vision where he sees God and his throne and his glory, really where he sees Christ. Uh, according to the New Testament, and uh, he says, "I'm a man of unclean lips," and then God <clears throat> puts a um, puts a coal uh, on his on his mouth and his lips and purifies his mouth and has cleansed him of his sins. <clears throat> so they're saying that that's the Kaaba. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. That's they're not saying possible. that's the Kaaba. Nah, that's let's not have, possible. Let's have fun with this one. Hold on, let me see. Come on, come on. Where am I at? Here we go. Make sure you guys hit that like button before we enter this room. Let's see if we can have some fun here. How long will last? 
Let's see how long we'll last. I'm gonna have to mute my mic. I'm trying to get it uh, to go on. I don't think it's going to let me. I don't know why the replays are on. So it should let me go ahead and do it. <clears throat> and thank you all for who are joining the Patreon right now. We got we have two people that joined the Patreon to uh, to join Patreon today. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate I really appreciate you guys, Marcus and um, it's Marcus, and we have uh, let's see and Boof, Boofy. I pre I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. <clears throat> But let's see. Let's. It's not really working for me. Hold on. Let me try to reload this. Uh, brother, who's running those rooms? Like, who are the Muslims? X Planet. The uh, worst of the worst. I know that guy. I know. So you that know guy. it's not gonna go well. Nope. Uh, he mo he'll most likely just kick you. Not allow you to get in. Uh, oh, I know. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We shall see, brother. Exactly. We shall see. Um, but it's not looking like I can put it up. It's not letting me um it's not letting me do it for some reason. So looks like they dodged a bullet there. So, yeah. So it's not I just I just want to read something quick for everyone. Um on the, the, the source of like Muslims being able to eat human flesh. I found it and just wanted to quote it very quick, if you don't mind, brother. What? What are you talking about? So there's the source. I, I, I put the link in the private chat where it's permissible for Muslims to eat dead human bodies. I just wanted to read very quick for everyone in the live stream. It's a very quick thing. How you doing, City? Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, go, go ahead and read that source and uh, we'll get to City. <clears throat> All right, brother. So it says this for everyone in the chat. It says this. And since we permitted the consumption of human dead meat, it is not permissible to cook it or grill it because that is a violation of its sanctity. And he has the choice between eating it raw or something else. Welcome to Islam. Guess you got to eat the meat raw, brother. Raw. Eat it raw. Can't, can't cook it, man. All right. City, what's going on with you? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm all right. Are you uh, your brother in the faith? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Awesome. I love it. Did you have a, a yeah. question? Um, yeah. So, um, doo -doo -doo. I know that um, Muslims always say that like Jesus was a good teacher, good prophet, but um, one of the things, well, not but, but uh, one of the things that I like to use against them is uh, in Luke chapter 7 from 36 to 50 where the the woman comes in the house and uh she she uh rubbing the oil on jesus and kissing his feet and everything if he allowed that <laughs> then one he has to be god because only god could be worshipped and two like um he would wouldn't he, if he did allow that and he wasn't god wouldn't that just make him a bad teacher and a bad prophet? Of course it would. <clears throat> for for Jesus to what's up, ask truth? Man, you always come in, but you're never like available. But you're you're welcome to come up and join me, man. Um uh, and text me if you want to join me. Yeah, if if the type of G, the type of attention, adoration, veneration that Jesus got from his disciples, from uh, the people around him, from the women who followed him, the type of adoration and veneration that he got 
and accept it would automatically make him a false prophet, according to the Bible, one, uh, and according to Islam, because he would be allowing shirk. These people are literally worshiping Jesus. They are washing his feet in worship and adoration, bowing to him, pleading with him, praying to him, you know, seeking him, all these type of things, uh, the, this type of attention, adoration, and veneration that you give to God and God alone. And he, and he accepts it all. He accepts it all. He never says, I'm stuck for the law. No, 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 don't do that. He never says, do not get up, get up. Do not worship me. Do not give me that type of veneration. No, he accepts it. And when they don't give that same honor to him, when they do not give that same honor to him, then, um, you know, it's like <clears throat> he responds with them dying in their own sins and them resisting the Holy Spirit or them not being of his sheep because of their hard hearts, things of this nature. So, yes, you're absolutely right, City. Absolutely wow. right. Yeah, because that's, that's one of them. That's one of the scriptures I like to use is I have a Muslim friend and um, I just show him over and over every time I'm around him. You know, I try, I try to just sneak a little shots of the Bible in there about, uh, you know, about Jesus being God. And yeah. uh, this, is one of, this is one of the scriptures I like using because, as you said, like, if he was if he wasn't God, like, he would just be like, hey, don't worship me. I'm not I'm not the one. You know, he would kind of just push it to the side. And, and then he's over here saying your sins are forgiven. Who else is for <laughs> forgiven sins other than God alone? Come, so on. Like, Come on, man. You know, Come on. <laughs> But um, who else is the one who's going to be on earth in human form saying that your sins are forgiven? Come on yeah. now. All right. This, this, this yes, only ask one. Truth. Perfect. All right. Here you go. Ask truth. Here is uh, whoops. Sorry. Here's the link, man. I miss you, dude. Come on up. But yeah, what, what else you got, City? So you said you have a, a Muslim friend that you talk to constantly, or is it different? Uh, different Muslim. Uh, oh, it's. It's here and there. Um, honestly, um, I kind of been at a point in my life where um, I've kind of been kind of pushing away from my friends because a lot of them, you know, they believe, but they don't really follow. And so it's been hard. You know, they still do things that I used to do. You know, a lot of them still smoke weed. A lot of them still party. And, you know, I, I spent kind of like I spent like my first few years in the faith kind of like trying to, hey guys, like you got to know this Jesus. You got to know like this is the best thing in the world. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I know it sounds crazy, but like you like just read the Bible with me, have Bible study with me. And at, at first it was working, but you know, they're, they're still caught up in the world. So I kind of just pray for them and everything now. But um, I, I kind of been kind of pushing away and cutting off my friends because uh I, I need I need godly people around me. I need people to follow and believe the same thing I do, you know. So it, it's right it's been kind of it's been kind of you know uh not like hard, you know, at times I get lonely, you know, physically. Yeah, it's a little lonely, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. lonely. But um yeah. I I try to just I try to just stick in my word, stay in my word. Um I try to just do whatever I could, man, whatever the church, my church has. Uh, I try to go to the events. I go to men's conferences. I try to do what I can and just stay around, you know, the, the same people that have the same faith as I do, you know, and iron sharper as iron. So if I'm not around, if I'm not around people that's going to help me grow in, in, in the faith, then I really can't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's rough, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I definitely appreciate uh Every time I see you on the stream, you you guys, uh, everybody on here, seeing the art, the debates that you guys have, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, that I learn. You know, what I mean, there's definitely a lot of things I learned. I, I remember the last time I, I never really understood, you know, when Jesus was on the cross and he was like, um, you know, my God, why have you forsaken me? And uh, you know, I, last time I got an answer. Last time uh, I actually got an answer. You know, you were saying like it's more of the fact that he's uh. You know, hey, can, can we hurry that up a little bit? You know what I mean? I'm hanging on here. So, um, but <laughs> no, I, I appreciate um, what you do. I appreciate what you're doing, man. And I just I think everybody that's on here. 
Well, God bless you, bro. And and just to give you some encouragement too, man. I've I was I've I've felt the same way and sometimes still feel the same way when it comes to um like this walk, our our walk. It, it could be a lonely walk, man. Um yeah. when you're the only one who takes Christ seriously and when he sets you apart like that, it's you can you can see it clearly. Um so obviously the best thing you can do for them not only is to pray for them, but to continue to be that example, continue to deny your flesh, continue to choose God over the world. And, um, and hopefully they will wake up to that type of, to that type of relationship with Christ as well and, and choose him too. They'll be encouraged by that, you know, so keep, keep doing it. I'm praying for you and for, for your, for your friends, brother. I am. Yeah. Let me go ahead and give a shout out to N.A. Odessa real quick. Um, where did Jesus say he is God or worship me? It come from Council of Nicaea, Paul, 300 years later. Ah, here we go again. <laughs> Christian, <Here>. Christians cope. <laughs> Islam, monotheism. Anyway, I'm off to pray to a rock. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <they're laughs> oh, all right. That was a joke. Hey, yeah, it was a joke. Mm -hmm. It was a joke. Um, we got Ask Truth Apologetics in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, He's come off the comment section and has joined us in the stream. What's up, my man? Mic working all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay, just making sure because I was having trouble with it getting on. Um, my baby's asleep, so that gives me a chance. I got the day off work, and I, I caught you live, and I figured I'd come up here. Uh, but God, God bless everyone here on the panel. But I'm going to step aside here for a little bit because I know Anonymous Anonymous is super anonymous with his shades on. And, uh, <laughs> the shades, the hood. Been, 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 <laughs> but but I guess you could assume that. <laughs> All right, Say what about the glasses? The the glasses are prescription. But I was just saying. So I get. I guess you can just assume that I'm I'm, I'm adding to the anonymity, but. I just do that for my uh, digital legacy, you know. I'd rather people not know my name, but I'd like to have the courage to at least come on here and show my face, you know what I mean, rather than other people that are just behind the keyboard, you know? That's dope, man. So just one more shout-out before we get into the conversation. Uh, Kizanum, uh, thank you for the, for the gift. How many subs do you gain a day? Insane. 100K, let's go. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know the answer to that. But we are growing pretty fast, um, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing. All glory to the to the Most High God. It is a true blessing, uh, and let's just keep let's keep going, guys. Let's keep pushing this ministry. Okay, all right. So anonymous and Boofy, uh, the new patron is up here. Welcome. So go ahead, anonymous. Uh, what would you like to share with us today? Mm, I guess uh, I guess I could just start with who I am and I guess what my journey is. I mean, I, just like all of you that read the Bible, I mean, and obviously you've read uh, parts of the Quran and, and things like that. So I'm on that same journey, you know, to, to find the truth, not so much as to uh, ridicule and, and, and say uh, what is false, you know, in, in the journey of it, you need to figure out what is, you need to be in the search of the truth is basically what I'm trying to get at. And um, I basically just wanted to come on here to, sorry, I'm like, I'm at work right now, so I might have to leave or something, but I, I'm, I'm trying to stay on here. I've been chatting with everybody, but uh, I just wanted to know what is your, your personal mis mission of yeah. this channel? Like, what, what is your, your, your purpose? Yeah. Okay. So the number one. Only, I want... Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. It's, it's only just because from, from the fan base that I've interacted with you with, uh, it's been very negative, you know what I mean? So I've just been trying to. I, I can see that sometimes you, you you try to stay away from ridiculing others, you know. So I wasn't wasn't too sure about um, your stance. Yeah, I usually I usually match the energy that's given. Sometimes, sometimes I may I may turn on a side of me that uh, begins to talk trash back when people talk trash to me. I'm a, I'm a right, I get that. I'm, I'm the exact same way. And that that's what I wanted to come on here is because that's literally what we were just doing in the chat. And yeah. I just wanted to take the time to say like, 
it's not that hard for someone to also come on here and talk with me. All those people yeah. that were talking with me on the chat aren't on here right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so, just, let me, so let me tell you what the mission is. So the mission, yeah. number one, is to um, equip Christians with the uh, the knowledge to engage with other faiths, the uh, give an example of how to engage with other faiths, whether they want to, you know, how to talk to people um, and share the gospel effectively. And so nothing, nothing in regards to non-Christians. Oh well, that's I'm just saying number one. I'll, okay. I'll get that part. So I, I, my my goal number one is to equip the Christians and to embolden them to share the gospel like this if they can um, without being. So a lot of people are shy to do it. A lot of people are like they fear that they don't have enough knowledge at the time yep. and things of this nature. And so I just want to encourage them and equip them with knowledge and information so that they can go out and share it wherever they are. That's number one. Number two is also to share the gospel with non-Christians and have them accept Christ give them the knowledge and information about the Bible. If, if I could share, and this is just my personal opinion, I ain't telling you how to, how to run your shit, but, well, I don't know if I could say yeah, that. Yeah, language, language up here, bro. I, ain't, I ain't trying to tell you how to run stuff, but um, I think that your number two should be your number one. Well, it's, uh, for, for me, I don't think so, because there's a lot of us that's already sharing the gospel, um, but there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us of Christians who um, sit down on our own salvation, where we, where we sit on the, we've received the gospel and no one, and, that, and that's it. No one is moving on that. No one is active. A lot of people are afraid of being, of, of cancel culture and stuff yep. like that. So uh, that's, that's my personal conviction is to equip and embolden the believers. The Bible says, and I just read this in Hebrews last night for us to continuously serve the saints. So we are to serve each other, the body of Christ, the Christians, to embolden each other and encourage each other. In oh, yeah, we're the supposed to outdo each other and showing honor. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's why I named that first because the Bible kind of names that first. Okay, that's cool. Well, um, I guess what my question is, is, um, Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, hold on. It's okay. Interesting. I guess it's always good to get feedback on how you should run your channel, though. I think that's important. <laughs> right, right, right. I think he, I think he should join the uh, management team. That's a good idea, as, as long as he joins Patreon. Okay, sorry about yes. that. Um, <laughs> For real. But, yeah, go ahead. So you had a question? Um, yeah, I honestly, are you, are you, Muslim, but, um, let me ask, huh? are you a Muslim? Me? Well, yeah. like I said, like I said, I'm currently on a journey. So I, I would say I haven't mm, per se elected a faith or elected a religion is what I should say. Um, I, I, and and my, I, my question, I guess, is what I was trying to say is, is what is your, um, main approach in trying to, um, get, let's just choose Muslims. How do you uh, get Muslims to successfully convert into believing Jesus? And oh, I don't well, know if you had like any any experience doing that. I'm sure yeah, you so have. I, I'm, I'm just I've, yeah, I've had, I've had a few experiences where someone has successfully come um, come to Christ, and and each time it starts. I've it started with showing um, how false Islam was. Okay. Because once they saw how false Islam was and how um, horrible a person Muhammad actually is um, and blasphemous how Muhammad actually is, that's when their mind and their hearts open to Jesus and the gospel. And so back to my first point and how I said I'm in the search for the, the truth, you know, I'm not so much into the search of um, belittling one's character. And I mean, we could look at King David, King Solomon, so many different people that did a lot of different all, all things. All fallen men, you know? yes, all fallen and, men. Exactly, and so in in, in my opinion, um, doing that is sort of a ad hominem, you know. And it's, then, an ad hominem it would be something that is is like false, and you're just attacking someone's character to prove a point. That's that's what an ad hominem is. These I mean, that's just what you said that you're trying to get Muslims to falsely believe 
I mean, how bad of a person uh, Muhammad was in order to convert. Into so like, no, like, so for example, for example, is it, um, is it, is it, um, is it an ad hominem if someone, a grown man, were to sleep with a little girl today? If he slept with a little girl, would it be an ad hominem if I said that man is a pedophile? That alone in itself? Yeah, if he slept with a little girl. No, because you're not refuting anything else. He wasn't a prophet. You're not trying to. You're not trying to refute anything that he's brought to the table. But, so no. but it means. But so it's not an ad hominem to say the truth of what he is, right? Of what that correct, person. Correct. Correct. But okay. I'm just saying what oh, you hold said. On, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So my point is, is that I'm not falsely making accusations against Muhammad. I'm only re showing the Muslim who Muhammad actually is. Uh, aside from the fluff and the indoctrination that they received growing up, I do you mind if I pull up the definition of ad hominem real quick? You can, yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> it's when you attack a character uh, in order to try to make a point. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be true or false, and that's well, what I'm trying to get at. It's, it's also when you attack a character um, when it's when the character is not in at the the topic. But with mm -hmm. Muslims, the topic is always Muhammad is the best example for all mankind. So to, to point out a flaw in the claim of him being the best person ever is not an act. Where is that it's claim? It's actually addressing the exact the best person ever. Um, where is that claim? The Muslims claim it all the time. They yeah, but that, where is that like in the scriptures or what is what is what do you yeah. mean the best person so, so they they'll, they'll have certain and I don't I don't remember exactly the source but they'll have hadiths that talk about um Allah says that Muhammad is the most cherished of Allah's creation uh that he's the best for mankind that he's a I just want to clarify real quick in front of all of your viewers that you don't have any source for that anonymous you wanted an answer right I'm, yeah, just, I mean, I'm just saying before I mean, you actually, answer that yeah, yeah, you wanted you're an not answer. providing a source for that. Correct? You, wanted, I, you wanted an answer, right? With a source. So so if I'm giving you, if I'm telling you what Muslims tell us, and we're just addressing the claims, it doesn't matter if even if they don't use a source. If they claim, yeah, Muhammad is the best example of mankind, without a source, without a Quran or a Hadith saying that, we, it is a, we can address that claim that they just made and address it showing how Muhammad's not the best example for mankind. I'm just saying that uh, Ask Truth's definition of ad hominem was anonymous, needing anonymous. a source, you know, but that you guys don't have the source of that. So anonymous, can just, I show you what source? Me, can I show kind you? of fell away, you know? An anonymous, I can I show you what source from the Quran? Can I, show you, can I show you from the Quran that says that in Muhammad there is a, there is a, per, there is a pattern of conduct for every Muslim? Can I show you one? A source from the Quran itself. Sure. Are you talking to me? Yeah, yes, talking I'm talking to you. You wanted the verse from the Quran. Go to chapter 33, verse 21. Allah says, Verily, in the Messenger of Allah, ye have a good example for him who looketh unto Allah and the last day and remembereth Allah much. But if you want a simpler translation for you to understand, the Sahih International Translation of chapter 33, verse 21, it says this. There has certainly been for you in the messenger of Allah an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. Oh, okay. So it's the Muslims misinterpreting that and saying he is the most excellent person in the world, right? It doesn't explicitly say that in the scriptures, correct? Even, no. even, even, to, say, even to say that he it is a good, good example, pattern, you know, even, or even excellent say, example. Yeah, even to say, hold on, anonymous, if, you're, if we're going we're gonna to talk, we can't talk over each other. If, we're, if he's to say that Muhammad is the best example of mankind, we can address that. Right. You just said, you just say, said good I just or said, excellent. Excuse me. I'm, I'm asking you to not talk while I talk. Can we do that? You talk. Yeah, I'm listen. just saying you're misquoting him. I'm just, just saying I when I talk, you listen. When, I, sure. when you talk, I listen. Sure. Fair enough? All right, cool. So when they claim that Muhammad is the best example for mankind, we can address that claim that they say. Even if they're not quoting a source that explicitly says that exactly, if that's what they're claiming about Muhammad and that's what they believe, we can address them. We can address them. Now, if they're quoting the, the verse, like, for example, what Truth just quoted, 
that says that Muhammad is a good example for mankind, a good pattern of conduct for humans to follow in a way to seek God and obey God, we can address that as well. So is he a good example or not? So my, my question like it would be very simple. Would a good example of mankind, would a good example for mankind be a pedophile? Probably not. Right. So with that reasoning, we could say Muhammad disqualified. If he's a pedophile, right? If he slept with, a, if he's a 54 year old man who slept with a nine year old. So do we do that with the scriptures of David and Solomon as well? Do we just swipe those to the side or, or what do we do with those? Ask, did you want to Another respond to that? Fallacious. Well, now he's just making a, a fallacious argument. Now you're making a two quote quay fallacy. Okay. You're saying, well, David did this, Solomon did that, Abraham did that. Okay. No, I'm just that asking him. Right. I mean, with the no, Muhammad sisters, they seem to watch that away. So I'm it. just it's, asking, it's, do we do that? Is my husband working no? right now? Can you guys yes. hear me? Yes, I can okay, hear you. Okay, because he keeps talking when I'm talking, so it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, um, anonymous. You you gotta we well, gotta let the guys finish because you've been cutting us off up here. I'm, I'm sorry. To... I think it's the end of his statement, so that's when I start. Just, just wait wait until he like gives you a code like the signal like you know go ahead. And then go ahead and, and talk with them. Sounds good. All right. Go ahead, ask. Nobody made the claim, first and foremost, that any of those people were the best example or a good, perfect example for, for mankind, right? And uh, so just because they did something wrong doesn't give a pass for someone else to do also something wrong. You understand, right. right? So, so you're you're making a two quote quay fallacy. Um, <clears throat> I'm just asking. So can, the question. I was just asking to you, you is, like, is, is like, you're I making a fallacious. I don't know. You don't understand what we're saying. The problem is this. Muslims have this idea that Muhammad, right, and you saw the Quran, he's a good example for people. We're trying to disprove that. Yes, Solomon and David are not good examples. They did bad things, but the Bible is very clear. We're not supposed to follow the examples of man, but the examples of God. And mm -hmm. so you mentioning the things that Solomon did, David did is completely irrelevant. The Bible doesn't say we're supposed to follow their examples. So therefore, it's completely irrelevant. But in the Quran, it says that Muhammad is an right. excellent it's an excellent example. So now we're trying to disprove that that Muhammad is not a good example for people, and that's why we're, you know, we're talking about or we're addressing this uh, topic. That's why. Go ahead, anonymous. You go respond. I'm just saying that I'm not like making an argument or saying that David and Solomon did do this. I'm just asking you, just like you said. Okay, let's look at somebody, and if they're not a good example, then we need to get rid of it. And um, is there not a quote or Bible uh, scripture that says that David and Solomon were great as well? Uh, so I just don't understand why we're just picking and choosing which ones we want to wash away. Yeah, so it's not that we're picking and choosing anything. Um, for example, when it comes to, to David, he sinned, and when he sinned, God punished him and he was repented of that sin, gravely repented, always consistently asking God to forgive him that he was wrong, that he was sinful and things of this nature. As opposed to when it comes to Muhammad, when he did things, he used God as an excuse. God will come in and make an excuse on his behalf on things that he can do, like sleeping with Aisha when she was nine years old having whatever woman that he wanted, and that was only a, a benefit that only he can have, not the other men, not the other believers. But he used God, uh, or even having um, uh, marrying his, his adopted son's wife, he used God to okay that stuff. Instead, where David is admonished by God, uh, Solomon is admonished by God, disciplined by God, and they don't falsely use God as a crutch for their sin. So you can clearly see the difference between the, the the prophets and how they conducted themselves when they sinned. Is is there no um, citing in the Quran that that states that Prophet Muhammad would perform salah, which is prayer, um, many 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 times a day, in, in which in those prayers uh, included the phrase Allah, Allahumma firli, which means God please forgive me. 
So in the sense, I, I just feel like the sense that you're saying that he was not repenting for any of his sins in, in which we may not know that. No, I didn't say that he wasn't repenting of his sins. I said he well, was you were saying he was giving it as a crutch. And, said, and, and yes, you said that David repented. So, and like, so like, for example, for example, so for example that's what Prophet Muhammad did. For, for, for example, Muhammad said that the reason, the, Muhammad said that the reason why he uh, got with Aisha was because God revealed it to him. You telling me that God will reveal to a grown man to sleep with a little girl? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? That Muhammad said in a hadith that he had a dream about Aisha, and therefore Allah revealed to him that that's that's who should, his wife should be. So he married Aisha and had sex with her when she was nine years old, playing with dolls, still swinging on swings. It's literally. How old was, how old was uh, Prophet Muhammad at that time? Fifty. I believe, I believe fifty-four. Okay. So 54 years old, says he has a dream about this little girl and then goes and marries her on the unction that it's my God revealed this to me. So he so if he had the dream about her. Did he know her prior to that dream? Yes. Yes. For it, was how long? Friend's, it was his best friend's daughter. He known her since she was born. It was his best friend's daughter. OK, so it's his best friend's daughter. And how long was yeah. the relationship with the best friend of Muhammad? Years, years, man. Years. It's Abu Bakr. They've been friends for years. Okay. So, this, so yes, what did Abu Bakr have to say about that? <laughs> Abu Bakr tried to say when it, when Muhammad at, came and asked his asked Aisha for marriage, Abu Bakr was like, "But we're brothers. We're brothers, right? Why would you do that? You can't." But Muhammad said, "No, no, 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 no. We're just but we're just brothers in the faith. She's lawful for me." So in, uh, Abu Bakr tried to indirectly say no to Muhammad, knowing that he can't directly deny Muhammad. He's the prophet of God. He has the authority and the power. Who is he to, to deny Muhammad what he wants? But he tried to, you know, passive aggressively deny, like say no, like, but we're brothers. He, he objected to it slightly. But we, we know the, the construct of power there. He can't really say, no, you're not marrying my daughter. Muhammad could do what he wants. Interesting. So. Well, yeah, I mean, that's basically just like the stuff that I wanted. And I appreciate you having like a civil conversation with me. I mean, my phone is extremely overheating right now because of <laughs> all these applications that I have open. But I, I hope to join you again uh, in the future. Um, and You're yeah, more than welcome. I appreciate you, God Logic. I appreciate you too, Anonymous. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for being civil as well. And please, yeah, come on whenever you want, man. Whenever you say, hey, God Logic, I'm here, man. I want to talk. I'll, I'll bring you up anytime. I appreciate that. I'll be sure to have a bunch of questions ready for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Take care, man. See you. Ask Truth. What you think? I don't know. That, that whole interaction was a little bit strange for me. It, it seemed... Sneaky, it's benefit of, of, of the doubt, but the way that he was asking questions and the knowledge that he was learning about seemed uh, a little sus to me. Like, I, I feel like he's a, probably just a Muslim. Yes, a clear Muslim. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I don't know why he wasn't being honest about it, per se. So, you know, I think just kind of stuff like that just kind of rubs me the wrong way, but I do appreciate him coming up. Uh, I know in the chat people were calling him out, telling him to come up, and he and he showed up. Uh, mm -hmm. He did show his face, which uh, he did know, show his face. A, a little bit of bravery and whatnot. Um, and he had a, a cute little picture of an LOL doll colored in uh, in the background. And I've got young daughters, and uh, they like LOL dolls, and we may have that exact same colored picture in in the background. But. Uh, <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, what's going on, Rob? How are you, brother? What's up, man? God bless you. That was an God excellent. Uh, that was an excellent summarization of a cult-like mindset. Um, myself dealing with a cult that's currently in the U.S. Uh, a voice of it's what's called a voice of healing, Michael Petra cult. And yeah, same sort of tactics. Um, like when you mentioned Abu Bakr and. It's my daughter, dude. <laughs> yeah. <my> brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that power dynamic. That that mm -hmm. is when you when you just 
when you sort of paraphrase the scenario, like you put you put aside all the shoddy English translation of the Arabic and you just paraphrase it like in plain English. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's as plain as day. It's it's yeah. weird. Yeah. You 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 can and, you can yeah. you can see in the narration that oh Abu Bakr didn't like this. He didn't like this, mm. and he didn't want to do it. But how could I say no to Muhammad without saying no to Muhammad? How could I? So, and that was the best. That's the. It was like that's the thing he could come up with, y'all. Like, we're, we're brothers, man. What do you mean? <laughs> you, yeah. It's my daughter. We're brothers. I, it's. I think this is also similar to uh, what's that uh, guy's name? Uh, where apparently Muhammad walks by the tent and the door happens to open, and then he sees that woman changing and and then he gives her over like she's already married to him but then what's what's the name again oh, of those two he he's talking about the wife of uh, of Muhammad's adopted son and then he sees her and then he says blessed is Allah that changes heart something like that are you referring to that yeah. story yeah yeah because I remember I was just listening in on a clubhouse discussion where Muslims together like this is genuine this is just a Muslim discussion happening on predestination <laughs> and apparently Allah predestinating the curtain to move at the right angle and so on <laughs> for, for, that, <laughs> for that moment and it's just oh, like man. it's just like okay I understand you guys are discussing the complexities of you know the f- like God's for knowledge and because even Christians we discuss those things but you are so I mean you're approaching this into an area of of heavy like like intellectual discourse or what's required as heavy intellectual discourse missing the fact that it's a convenience for his sexual urges right. that, exactly. like as if Allah is doing this for Muhammad's sake sort of thing right like right. yeah um Hey, Big I had a comment about that. I was just going to say, Aisha even commented on it, how uh, I can't remember exactly what Hadith is. I'm sure we can find it. But, uh, you know, she said something along the lines of, you know, isn't it convenient that, uh, you know, your Lord hastens to fulfill your every desires? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. in, in that narration, you think, OK, Aisha was like onto it. You know, she had seen so much <laughs> stuff, especially from her childhood. Um, and uh, yeah. it was. Him. Almost. God logic looks like he's looking that up right now. I yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find it. And and I'm really glad you guys yes Found pushed it. on the fact that that the Old Testament prophets acknowledge their sin and how ironic the God the, the you know the God of the Old Testament in this case the God of the Bible really is the one that punishes them punishes them for their sin and then by the time you reach Jesus since like like from the start of his ministry to the end did god ever chastise jesus for doing anything wrong not a and single the answer is point not a single thing and jesus ah, is the one chastising them you know the hardest of your hearts stuff so yeah yeah <laughs> so this so this is the hadith that ask truth uh brought up <clears throat> uh, subscribe to his channel ladies and gentlemen if you have not already ask truth apologetics and so It says here, narrated Aisha, I used to look down upon those ladies who had given themselves to Allah's messenger. And I used to say, can a lady give herself to a man? But when Allah revealed, you, O Muhammad, can postpone whom you will of them, and you may receive any of them whom you will. (laughs) And there is no blame on you if you invite the one of the one whose turn you have set aside temporarily. This is chapter 33, verse 51. I said to the prophet, I feel that your Lord hastens in fulfilling your wishes and desires. Allah. It's a bit of like a sarcastic yeah. response, right? <laughs> yes. I feel like I feel like Aisha was smart. I do. Like there's certain things she says and it shows that she's like kind of up on game on some things, you know what I'm saying? And she makes little sly remarks every now and then that's like she she peeps, like she she sees this stuff. She's not stupid. 
But brother, believe me, it gets yeah. much oh, worse. Sorry, go ahead, True. No. So something that Rob mentioned about how Allah decreed the curtain to move, right? It just gets much worse when we're talking about predestination, right? Because even according to Bukhari, Allah predestined everyone's sins. And I'm just I'm about to give the source right now, but before I just wanted to say that from the Islamic view, every sin Muhammad committed, everything he did, Allah decided that before. So before Muhammad was born, before all of creation, Allah decided that Muhammad had to have a sex with a six-year-old, well, nine-year-old. He decided that Allah had, that Muhammad had to sleep with multiple women. He decided all of this himself. Because mm -hmm. when you go to, it's Sahih al-Bukhari 4, 47.88, Sahih al-Bukhari 47.88, it says the following. It, this is narrated by... Uh, Wait, sorry, 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 sorry. It's Sahih al Bukhari 6614. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Sahih al Bukhari 6614. It says this The Prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, Oh, Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, Oh, Moses, Allah favored you with his talk, talked to you directly, and he wrote the Torah for you with his own hand. Do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before my creation? So Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Moses. The prophet added, repeating the statement three times. This is Sahih al Bukhari 6614. So from this hadith itself, that is in Bukhari, Allah decided and he wrote down. All of the things that we would do, even before we did it. So every sin we do, everything Muhammad did, Allah sat down and he said, yes, Muhammad's going to do this. So in the end, every bad thing Muhammad did, from the Islamic perspective, Allah decided that. So it makes Allah look even worse. So everything Muhammad's doing here, sleeping with the kids, sleeping with all the women, Allah decided that. As you saw, because Allah decreed the sins that Adam would commit even before, so it means that Allah does that to every single human. So what you're seeing Muhammad doing, Allah decided that before it happened. So he's even worse than Muhammad. He's even worse than Muhammad. That's true. You said you had something to say. I think the moment may have passed. We were, we were kind of talking about Aisha and uh, you know, how she was kind of on to Muhammad. And, and the other thing that would, would lead me to believe that she was also on to it was the fact that it was her part of the Quran that was eaten by the, by, by the tame sheep that apparently snuck in right after Muhammad's death and ate part of the Quran. It was about breastfeeding of, uh, of an adult man 10 times, which I think she probably found a little bit odd. Um, and uh, the, the, the stoning of an adulterer um, as well were both ate. I always call it a bro goat ate it, abrogated because the goat ate it. Um, and, uh, you know, she was actually uh, accused of committing adultery. So I can imagine that was something that was very important for her to have abrogated out of mm -hmm. her life. So you're right. I think I, I think Aisha was a little bit on to the to the scheme. Uh, that was happening around her, but why would she be too upset? Because she was she was married to and was the favorite wife of like literally the most powerful man, uh, right? In, in, in Arabia at that time, so she was probably willing to uh, endure some of that stuff so that she could remain, you know, high high status in in that particular. Um, and I do have one other thing to to add to the conversation. I'm not good at sharing things. I did put in our private chat a link. Um, going based That's on you know the Allah Allah decrees um thing so of course the the sin of Adam was decreed um and then here's another one from Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim it says verily Allah has decreed for the son of Adam his portion of adultery which he will inevitably commit the adultery of the two eyes is a lustful look the adultery of the tongue is obscene speech the soul yearns and craves uh, what the passions will indulge or deny, right? So the key point here is Allah has decreed his portion of adultery, which he will inevitably the adultery. Um, and I did, this was a quick search. There's actually, a, I think there's probably a little bit better translations there. I have, I have a bunch of, I like, I have like a little album on my phone, a little photo album of screenshots of uh 
<clears throat> of hadiths like this that talk about Allah's predestination, um, the adultery ones, the um, the writing the bad deeds and good deeds before the child is even created, and even the one where he talks about how some he created for heaven and some he created or pre for paradise and some he created hell. Where Aisha thought that that little book, that little boy that died before he was even old enough to sin, she celebrated and was glad that he would go to to paradise. And Muhammad stopped her in her in her tracks and said, "No, peradventure." It may be otherwise, you know, because Allah for Allah creates some for hell, uh, even before they're in the Father's loins, and He creates some for paradise. So they have a bunch of stuff like that. Or, or one of my favorites, Rob, is the one that says uh, how one is doing good deeds to the point where he has he's basically like a cubit length or something like that from paradise, and then what Allah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. And then what Allah has written for him in his fate overcomes him and he begins to do the bad deeds of the ones that is going to, uh, to hellfire. And then he ends up in hell. But he was doing so good on his own. He was doing so good. He was so close. But then Allah said, nope, what I, I wrote for you that, that you'll go to hellfire. So I also heard uh, another one in Clubhouse was a Muslim um again amongst each other saying that uh, some story about a guy who i killed like i think he killed like a hundred people in this town or something and then apparently there was an angel on his shoulder that said uh, oh if you go to that other town and you repent of your actions or something uh you will be saved or something like i i could be butchering the story but so anyway he goes to this is on his way to this other town but he dies supposedly halfway between the two towns and then there's a debate between these two angels um and then it was concluded that oh since he's about 51 percent beyond the 50 percent mark of the distance he's saved he's closer to that more righteous town or something like like i could be butchering it but are you guys familiar with this so-called parable no i haven't heard this you've heard okay. this ask Oh, by the way, I, Ars, I remember when you it's speak, slightly it's, different. There seems to be when you speak, your microphone seems to. I, I, there could be some sort of feedback loop that that mutes you, and then it kicks in. So, yeah, like, it's it's like it fades. It. It's like it fades yeah. into what you're saying. I get. Yeah, if you bring it, it means nothing. I, I, we didn't hear what you said. <laughs> it's like it's like your your first your first few words are are mute, but then it picks up as you continue talking. Okay, how about you just go testing one two three, then start your sentence, and it'll work. <laughs> yeah. One two three, testing testing one two three. Yep. You, you have, if you I have bring to it keep... back up again, it works. <laughs> yeah. You have to say testing one, two, three before you speak every time. Because it, it doesn't, it doesn't pick up the beginning of your words. Why are you saying that? Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna uh, try to figure this out. I'm gonna go on on black screen. You guys keep having fun. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so Avery, I just wanted to ask a quick question. So basically, from what we've read about predestination, it means that every sin I've done, every sin you've done, and every sin Hitler did, Allah decided that that would happen before it happened, right? Of course. Uh, Allah is the one that has decreed that I would do that and has made me do that. I think we have somebody. Uh, we I think we have somebody up here. How are and Boofy? You haven't spoken. Can you hear me, Boofy? Your mic's unmuted, but I don't hear you. Oh yeah, that's my fault. Can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. There we go. God bless you. Yeah, I I actually did have a question. Um, does the Quran ever? make the claim that 
all the prophets or I guess specifically Prophet Muhammad being sinless or perfect? No. The Quran it, the Quran explicitly says that Muhammad had sins. Um, oh, that's okay. chapter 48 verse 2. Um <clears throat> Yeah, there's no, there's nowhere in the Quran or anywhere that says that the prophets were sinless. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Yeah, so, so when if a Muslim says that, they're literally making that up, literally out of thin air. I've I've heard someone say it. I don't know where yeah. I got it from. Well, the, the Muslims, the Muslims, they say it. They say that the prophets were wow. sinless. That's what they say. But I, but also again, why? if any, so yeah, because according to chapter forty verse fifty five, chapter forty verse fifty five of the Quran, the pick it all translation is very clear. Uh, it says, then have patience, O Muhammad. Lo, the promise of Allah is true. And ask forgiveness for thy sin. And him the praise of thy Lord at all, at fall of night and in the early hours. So Allah is telling Muhammad, for Muhammad to pray to Allah, to ask Allah to forgive his sins. So Muhammad does have sins according to chapter 40, verse 55 of the Quran. He does. Yeah. Uh, and 100 just shared a, a hadith that's really good. It's the hadith that says that every child, when they were born, was touched by the devil other than um, Mary and Jesus. So, so yeah, it's a bold-faced lie. <clears throat> I've seen... Is 1 plus 1 plus 1 here a Muslim? We're about to find out. He is a Muslim. He's barking in there alone one plus one plus one equals three how are you you can go ahead and speak unmute, unmute your mic you're on stage you gotta unmute your mic rob really wants to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> one plus one plus one i want i want a philly i want a philly steak first <laughs> By the way, in the meantime, ready. awesome, awesome. In the meantime, as he as we as we get his Philly steak, um, make sure you guys like the stream, like the video, you know, like the stream and stuff like that. Also, uh, I want to thank the people who throughout this stream who have been joining the Patreon and giving the super chats and stuff like that. God bless each and every one of you guys. Um, and for those who uh, have joined the Patreon, I actually named a few names earlier. I don't know if you guys are comfortable with that, so. I don't know if I want to keep doing that, but I, I see you guys, I, uh, and I want to say thank you to the ones who have joined. Um, the link is pinned in the comment section, guys, because we're trying to go full time. So um, so join on, hop on the mission, and support the ministry as we get all of this uh, spread throughout the world as quickly as possible, as big as possible. And then uh, we can get Rob as many Philly ch ch uh, you know, sandwiches as he wants. You know, that would be a blessing for my brother. So let's go ahead and keep I doing need those that. Gains. He needs the gains. <laughs> he needs the gains. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Let's keep it growing. We're at 38 patrons now. We're almost at 40 patrons. And it's been uh, it's been like, you know, only a month now. Only a month or, two, or a month and a half. No, I want to say a month. Probably a month and a few weeks. Uh, since we since I've launched the Patreon and uh, we almost have 40 patrons already. So I, you know, that that's uh, that's awesome to me. God bless each and every one of you guys. You guys are showing God is faithful. All right. Ask truth. We have you back. Hey, did you fix it? We'll find out. Did I fix it? Maybe. And yeah, that's an instant. Yeah. That's keep talking. You three. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm better. Really Really picking up on that's better. Are you are you on speakers or is the audio going to your headphones? I, I I was using Bluetooth earlier, switched it to this, and then I've got my Yeti. Yeah, it's Ooh. it's it's, it's the, the the response is faster. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. There is. you go. Fine. That's great. All right. Beautiful. So. <laughs> Do we have any Muslims in the chat that would like to come up and absolutely make a fool out of Ask Truth Apologetics or Rob from Sentinel Apologetics or even the truth? I mean, you guys can come up here. These guys, you know, they think that they know that stuff. 
think they know your sources. You know, they laughed earlier at a certain at, at some of the references. How dare they? Uh, blah, blah. So come on up if you're a Muslim, and uh, well, ask ask Truth. Uh, clarify again that story before you left. You're gonna say something. Oh, about it's been so long. Can you? Uh, oh, we were talking about the um, the guy that the goat went. From yeah, who was there? I like yeah. for some reason in my mind, I remember like a law like shrunk the earth so that he would be closer to the to the thing but i i, I could be completely wrong oh, okay. but like the, okay. the way you told the stories essentially at like a law just you know said all right close enough you know since he's <laughs> he, he's apparently the god of close enough um yeah the uh the one plus one plus one equals three uh i don't know if you've been checking out the the private chat here god logic but he's he's uh got a whole lot of stuff that he has to say in there he said his mic wasn't working uh and apparently he is mike don't work bruz i'm streaming um and then he asked if he could mm -hmm. ask a question here mike don't work he's streaming yeah apparently he's streaming elsewhere i don't know you, video bro you gotta stream you gotta stream here man you're you're on a, you're on a stream I mean, just clip it, clip, clip this stream, and then add it to your stream later, man. Come on. Yeah, what he said. And if you're streaming, your mic should probably be working on your stream. Otherwise, you're having mic issues like me, and you're probably not doing a good stream. Streaming because display's broken. Laptop to external screen. One plus one plus one plus one equals three. And I had asked a question in the chat. He said, did Jesus not know everything? Yes, he did. He is all knowing. Not like your God, Allah, who is not all knowing according to the Quran. And I can I provide references. I don't know. I don't, I don't entertain comment comment stuff if they want to talk they got to come up on the, on the, on the panel no but yeah. brother avery the thing is this just backfires on him because i have at least three verses in the quran that indicates allah is not all-knowing i have verses with me that indicate that allah is not all-knowing if you want me i can show it to the people well, in the that. live stream well no, no yeah go ahead share these verses so, but i'm just saying i'm just saying uh, I don't. I don't entertain people who do not choose to come up on on the panel. I don't entertain them, so I don't like to give them any type of time if they don't have the efforts to come up on the panel and actually engage. So, you're right, brother. Avery, you should, you should share this for the sake of the people watching. Okay. What? Sorry, sorry. Uh, speak, bro. Sorry, so, someone uh, speaking. Oh, I was just gonna say you should check out the Muslim Cowboy stream the other day, the latest one. I was on there. You was on there, and was um, <clears throat> I think he had uh, some guy named John, like a guest speaker or something. Mm -hmm. and they interacted with him for about an hour. Very gracious guy. Uh, Wazam comes on, and it just went to a total dumpster fire. Like of all the ad homes, uh, like <laughs> you can pull out of a hat. And I was, I kept my cool in the sense I was just, I was laughing and just pointing it out to the to the to the level that john the guest actually told him in front of muslim cowboys uh audience mm. you're actually doing a disservice to your apologetic and to your witness um mm -hmm. by behaving like this and then obviously there's a twisting on like uh, oh apparently i'm a snake because i hang out with you guys and uh <laughs> and i'm just like <laughs> how is that is he, an argument right like, you, you said wasam came up yeah. Wassam from Clubhouse? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, okay. You can actually, if you want, I, you don't have to, but if you want, you can stream it for everyone here. Um, but you don't have to. Okay. So, then I won't. So if I don't have to. <laughs> so, You're not going to twist it. No, I'm just saying, arm, like, like it, it, to not deviate, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to really uh, read those verses very quickly, showing you Allah's guessing game, how he doesn't know everything. He does things to find out certain things, so he doesn't really know everything, right? So I'm going to be reading from Surah chapter 3, verse 140 to 142. Surah chapter 3, verse 140 to 142. This is the Shakir translation, right? And it says this. If a wound has afflicted you at Ohud, a wound like it has also afflicted the unbelieving people.
And we bring these days to men by turns. And that Allah may know those who believe and take witnesses from among you. And Allah does not love the unjust. That, and that he may purge those who believe and deprive the unbelievers of blessings. Do you think that you will enter the garden while Allah has not yet known those who strive hard from among you? And he has not and he and he has not known the patient. I don't know if so it's Surah chapter 3, verse 140 to 142, Shaykh's translation. So Allah, Allah, in this verse, it's very clear what it says. It says, we bring these days to men by turns and that Allah may know those who believe. So he does this to know those that believe. So he doesn't already, he doesn't already know it. He does something to know it, which means he's not all knowing. And then the verse says, do you think that you will enter the garden while Allah has not known, not yet known those who strive hard from among you? So before they, before they enter the garden, before everything, Allah has to do this. To know those who believe in the context of the passage for everyone in the live stream. What and verse I'm just gonna, is that? It's chapter uh, 3, verse 140 to 142. Shakir translation. So, what is it in the Arabic? Uh, I mean, in the, in the Arabic, does it say, does it say no to no? Wait, let me find that. That's a good question, actually. Let me just find, let me see if I can find the Arabic here. You said, uh, one, you said 3, 143? No, it's a, it's a, it's cha Wait, let me go back. Chapter three, hundred and forty to hundred and forty-two. Shakir translation. Okay. If a wound touches you, like I already touched, such the days we deal turn among men, and that God may know who are the believers. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I, I think God will figure it out. Um, I, I shouldn't say God. Allah will figure it out um, on the last third of the night. Um, he descends <laughs> in, into the lowest heaven, although he cannot enter his own creation. But when he does enter his own creation, although he can't, uh, then he will be able to heed the prayers on the last third of the night, also not realizing that the earth is a sphere and somewhere in the world, it is the last third of the night everywhere. So somehow he is both in creation constantly and above or on his throne, depending upon who you ask also constantly, which leads to my question. Why does he need to descend to the lowest heaven to be able to hear prayers? Oh, even, it, even though he can't it's a whole bunch descend. of problematic, even though he, doesn't enter creation, but he does. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, he, it all makes sense, guys, if if you don't think about it. So just don't. It don't makes sense it. if you affirm what Allah has told you. We only affirm what Allah has said. And that's yes. it. You know. As Muslims, we don't use our brain. If our brain so, contradicts what Allah says, we take our brain out. Avery, did you check the Arabic to confirm what I said? If you could. Is it, I'm is it correct? It. Oh. And so there's English translations that say exactly, you know, yeah, that Allah may know. There's also, there's an English translation that says, that uses test. I'm ch checking the Arabic. <coughs> and Ooh. even when you go to the verse right in, the, in the last the, lines, it um, says that, do you think that you'll enter the garden while Allah has not yet known those who strive? So also check that part. But there's more verses, right? So Yeah, um, so, the, yeah, it, it, it is... Um, yeah, so, so in the Arabic, they translate it as uh, to make it evident to Allah. Yeah. So that Allah, Allah, so that Allah knows, yeah. So that so that makes evident to, uh, you know, to Allah, those who believed and take from you martyrs. Yeah. So Allah is not evident. So Allah needs to do this it's, to be evident. So he does not know all things then, according to the yeah, Arabic. We, we alternate them among the people. So that makes evident, Allah, those who believe and take from you martyrs. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, bro. So Allah is not all knowing and he can't hear every prayer unless he descends. Wow. Such a powerful God. And there's like, it's all over the Quran, brother. Like, it's all That's over me. the Quran. 
to all over. Yeah, that's crazy. This is what I was looking at right here. This is how they put it. And the word here, Wali Yalama. So that make evident. And just it's interesting that they didn't put the two in in parentheses here to Allah when it's being made yeah. evidence to Allah. Um, I, I don't know if we want to get too deep into the woods, but I am actually curious now because I, I can see an argument being made one way or another with that in, in terms of mm -hmm. make evident. Um, what, are, are there tafts here on that particular one? Let's see. We have to be as fair as possible to make sure an argument is sound, to make sure we're not being fallacious, right? Yeah. Indeed. So let's see what the tough seers have to say about this one. It's, a, it's all right. It would be a good idea. <laughs> okay, so let's see what Jella Lane says. So Jella Lane says, if a wound touches you or falls you at your hood, <clears throat> a like wound, um, which is the exa exhaustion that da, 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 already at bother has touched the other people, the disbelievers, such days we deal out in turn we dispense them among mankind one day for one group the next day for another that that they might be admonished yeah and that god may know through knowledge the god of maybe ah wow that's just that one god though that's just that's just yeah. the two jawals let's uh you know let's let, let's at least look at uh, everybody's right. favorite kathir yeah so let's see i know it's going to be long yeah <laughs> The wisdom behind the losses Muslims suffered during Yahud. All right, so let's see if we can hikmah. skip points. Yes, <laughs> the hikmah. Um, let's see. Ultimate defeat was for the disbelievers. This is why Allah said yada yada, and then yada yada. One thirty-eight. Okay. The wound has touched you. Okay, here we go. Therefore, the ayah says, if you suffered injuries, you killed some of the fatalities, and so are the days that we give men their turns. Yada, yada. And that Allah may know. And he puts in parentheses, they, they put in parentheses, test those who believe. <laughs> meaning, so, meaning, so that we find out who would be patient while fighting the enemies, according to Ibn, Ibn Abbas? Oh, yeah. oh man, Ibn Abbas. Yeah, bro, it's game wow. over. Bro. It's game yeah, over. but Kathir, to be fair, Kathir will cite other commentators and then he will kind of give his final uh, analysis. Well, this is the Inca of, of, of the Uma ask. Well, it is, but you know, when you talk to Muslims, they're going to go, well, we don't really have a boss's writings. These are all fallacious, but if it agrees with what I like, it's fine, but uh, right. it's not fine. Okay, let's keep going. Let's not stop there and get too excited. Let's keep going. So <clears throat> according to Ibn Abbas, Allah needs to find out um, who would be patient while fighting their enemies. He didn't know beforehand. Mm -hmm. So he has to find that out according to Ibn Abbas. Um those who tune in, there, so that has nothing to do with that. All right, so then he starts going on to the next, later verses. Uh, did ver did verses one hundred forty one and one hundred forty two have anything would had any relevance to the to this uh, truth when you read it? Because you said one forty to one like forty three. No, one forty to one forty two. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. Do you think that you will enter paradise before Allah knows those of or test those of you who will perform jihad and knows those who are the patient. This ayah asks, do you think that you will enter paradise without being tested with warfare and hardships? Allah said in chapter two, or think you that you will enter paradise without such trials as came to those who passed before you? Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> Do people think that they will be left alone because they say so? So this is uh, Ibn Kathir's 
Tafsir on 142, when it says, do you think that you will enter paradise before Allah knows those who will perform jihad and before he knows those who are patient? He interprets that to mean before they're before or without being tested. Hmm. So he's contradicting Ibn Abbas, basically. He's taking his own interpretation of in his own mind because he can't fathom he's God not knowing everything. But like you said, the Arabic is pl plain and clear. So this is even this is Ibn Qutir trying to make put his own definition into the text, and it's very clear. Yeah. I don't know what does Allah knowing and testing have to do. Uh, I don't know how is that the same thing. It's a whole different story. So yeah, but we we have another ex we have multiple examples. You also have chapter three, one six six to one six seven Pigethol, which again says the same thing that, but it's a different story. But it's also the same case of Allah ha might know. And I don't know if if you want to go there, but it's a, it's a, it talks about the same issue. Yeah, let's do it. This is fun. So we have Ibn Abbas saying that Allah has to find out who will be patient. And Ibn Kathir takes the interpretation that it just means that um, <clears throat> you're being tested by Allah. So the ink of the Ummah says one thing, Ibn Kathir says another thing. Who do we take? Allahu Allah. So go to chapter 3, verse 166 to 167, Pikithal translation. So still in chapter three? Mm -hmm. Yes. This one is even better, man. Okay. 166. Six. To, to 167. Pick it all translation. That which be that which befall you on the day of judgment. On on the day, I'm sorry. Man, it does not say judgment there. That which befall you on the day when the two armies met was by permission of Allah that he might know the true believers. All right. Now let's see what the word is again here. Oops. Top series is next. <laughs> here it is again. <laughs> Why they're doing this right here? That he might make evident the he's the god of maybe didn't uh paul paul used to say that all the time i've not been on clubhouse in forever but uh uh he used to always say, call all of the god of maybe that is hilarious but so brother there's even a verse where they can't even play this game of like a lot testing there's even a verse where it says that allah will test people so that he will know so like you know there's test so like it's a, it's chapter 5 uh, verse 94 talks about Allah testing people so that he will know those that fear him in secret. So he's testing people so that he will know. He doesn't know it. So if you want to go to that one, it's very short. It's in chapter 5, uh, verse 94. It's a good it's one. So, so here you have the same stuff. Jalalain says that he might know through knowledge manifested outwardly. And let's see here what Ibn Kathir says on here. I want to see. Honestly, you'll most likely say it's a test, like you said it before. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, of course. Because I mean, Ibn Abbas is wrong, right? Who's Ibn Abbas? Yeah. You know, just the guy who got the hikmah of the Quran. <laughs> you know. Yeah, the man who Muhammad recommended for people to ask questions. Wow, what I mean, and all that's power things. Come on, Ibn Kathir, get to it. In order that he might test, yeah. In order that he might test the believers who are patient. That's hilarious. No, yeah, but brother, so the other one was what five ninety four. This one is this one is a five ninety four. This one he can't say it anymore. That knowing is testing. If you go to chapter five ninety four, Shakir translation, see what it says. <clears throat> Oh, believers, God will surely try you with something of the game. So test you, right? With something yes. of the game that your hands and lances attain, that God may know who fears him in the unseen. Whosoever thereafter commits transgression, there awaits him a painful chastisement. Now, this is interesting because testing and, his, and him knowing 
uh, is used in the same verse. So they can't say that his knowing is equal to the testing. He's testing you so that he exactly. will. Be. Exactly. That's good. Let's look at the top here and see what's said here. That's good stuff. Truth. That's brilliant. Rob, what do you think about this stuff? I want to know. I have nothing to add, man. <laughs> <laughs> but as you're as you're seeing this, you know, because you know your mind works. At you two ask truth. How you guys would think uh, Muslims would a attack this if you even tried to use this in a in a, in a discussion? Uh, I mean, if if I'm thinking like a Muslim, I'm going to say that uh, he's. Allah is testing them. Allah really actually knows what they're going to do. Um, but it's just uh, Arabic is such a rich language um, that, you know, we don't <laughs> quite understand what maybe means. Um, so, you know, this is just not a good verse because other verses say he's already decreed if you're going to go to heaven or hell before you're born. And even if you're a cubit away from paradise, he will bring to life uh, your your sins and then you will continue to sin so wow. uh you know like like pretty much anything else uh even if they make that argument even if we concede we're gonna say look there's just a contradiction now and, oh uh, brother yeah. that's a good point yeah uh, that's it, it's a pretty pretty easy thing uh you know there's there's a lot of contradictions going on here so if uh if if they even push back so you you just say oh, okay cool you've, you've got a contradiction then and then let them kind of work out that contradiction. So basically, yeah. Allah decrees everything. Oh, sorry, sorry, brother, if you speak. And not, and not just that, they'll they'll just avoid your question or your statement and directly go to some sort of biblical problem, so-called. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So no, actually, they're here's just, here's yeah. here's the real Muslim answer, uh, Mr. Truth. Um, how Jesus was on the cross and he said, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" Um, so why is God calling out to God? That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, bro. <laughs> Yo, Ibn Kathir is not making no sense. He quotes the part where it says that Allah, he quote, so earlier he taught, he quoted the part where Allah will test the person. Allah will certainly make a trial for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's breaking it down. Allah will certainly make a trial for you and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and you know, breaks that down. Allah tests his servants with such game during their Iran that if they wish, and yada yada yada. He starts breaking that down. Uh, and then the part where it says that Allah may know he <laughs> it goes that Allah may test who fears him in the unseen. Testing again, I guess. Therefore, Allah tests his servants with the game that comes near their camping area for they wish they can catch it. Oh, it looks like he's just repeating the verse, honestly, to me. Am I tripping? Brother, this is all over the Quran. Like, there's even another one which separates testing and knowing. It's in Surah 29, uh, verse 2 to 3. Literally the same thing. Allah tests so he can know, basically. Mm -hmm. Actually, this one says... Really? And Allah will certainly know, actually. So as the test, he can certainly know. So but he had a pretty good idea, but he needed the test yeah. to be 100% sure. And it, and it, and if I might put this one in God Logic's wheelhouse here. <laughs> um, it, it, so Allah needs to test people to really know the truth. Um, uh, but there's a there's a variance. There's a Quranic variance, I, I do believe, where Allah perhaps gets surprised or maybe oh. it's a law who gets surprised um so i guess it depends on the variant there but uh yeah yeah avery pointed that out once i think it's in the hamza reading right avery where Allah gets shocked that's right mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why that's why he All said right, put it in shocked. my wheelhouse <laughs> oh man this was fun that's that's uh that's good stuff uh good stuff truth so Three verses that were brought up, chapter 3, verse 140 to 142, chapter 3, verse 166 and 167, and the hitter where Allah, both Allah's testing and knowledge is said in the same verse, chapter 5, verse 90, uh, 
4, chapter 5, verse 94 of the Quran, where Allah tests the believers to know who are the believers. Brother, just one last verse, please. If this is, then we can close this if you want to. Just one last verse, if you don't mind, which is crazy. Just one last verse, if you don't as mind. As long as it's upon the hawk, man. As long as it's upon the hawk and hikmah. Of course, brother. It's, uh, so it's Surah chapter 72, verse 25 to 28. 72, verse 25 to 28. All right. Oh, wow. This whole, t oh. this whole time, the verses have not been on the screen. No, I mean, there was at one point there. Oh, here we go. Okay, they're probably something. on your screen. Yeah, they were on my screen. I'm thinking the whole time. We're looking <laughs> Nobody at else together. can see it, but hey, whatever. That's crazy. This whole time, I thought we could look at it together. You guys are terrible, like, help. <laughs> terrible. So, brother, it's chapter 72, verse 25 to 28. Okay. Okay. 25 to 28. Say, I do not know whether that which you are promised is nigh, or whether my Lord will appoint it for, uh, will appoint for it a, a space, <clears throat> nor he of the unseen, and he discloses not his unseen to anyone save only to such a messenger as he is well pleased with. Then he dispatches uh, before him and behind him watchers that he may know they have, they have delivered the messages of their Lord and he encompasses all that is with them and he has numbered everything in numbers. So if no is test, that would mean that it would say that he may test, they have delivered the message. It wouldn't even make sense if no was test. So this verse, it's over, man. It's over. It's over. Yeah. He's the God of maybe. It's hilarious how Heli Khan and them, how they put this in brackets. He Allah protect <laughs> them, the messengers, till he sees, till he sees that they have conveyed the message. This is crazy. What a what a distortion of the text right here, man. What a distortion. You know how you said uh, Allah is the god of the maybe. That actually reminds me of a family friend who a lot of people here may recognize. Um, He's, he's he passed away in 2020, but the British theologian David Paulson, um, he paraphrased the biblical God's name, Yahweh, as the God of always. <laughs> so when he said God of maybe, it's like there's a <laughs> that's, clear contrast. That's that's a timely uh, a timely statement that you just made there because it. The interesting thing is, I was listening to his message just the other day, and he speaks about the Israelite God as the God of always. So, um, amazing. Yeah. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, these are verses that we can have fun with in discussions with Muslims. In fact, I think I'm going to start a room right now on Clubhouse and try this stuff out and see what they have to say about it. Uh, and keep it streaming. Keep it streaming. I might, yeah, I might start a new stream. Actually, I'll start a new stream uh, and see if we can get some Muslims uh, in here and have have a good discussion. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. All right, brother. Until then, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for the support. Rob, Ask Apologetics, Truth, Boofy. Thank you guys for joining the stream, joining the panel. Remember, I need that Philly steak. Uh, yeah, we gotta get we gotta get Rob that Philly steak. So join the Patreon. Join the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, Ask Apologetics, I missed you, man. I missed, I've missed you. you too, my man. Awesome. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll, we'll be coming back here pretty soon. Um, got some fun stuff coming up with Mr. Thaddeus on Reasoned Answers. Uh, we're, we're going through the Finding Nomo series. 
don't know if you remember watching that or not, where we go through yep. every claim that Muslims make where they think Muhammad is found. And uh, uh, we're on Isaiah 42 is the next one. And I wanted to knock this one out of the park as much as possible. And we're up to um, 159 PowerPoint slides on it. So oh, should, should be should be. Should be a long one, uh, but we're we're going to be coming up on that here, I believe, on the first. So then I should be back in action. Uh, you know, it's been been busy, but it's good to hang out with you, Mr. Avery, Mr. Rob, Mr. Truth, Boofy. Yeah, I didn't hear you talk, buddy, but uh, I saw you in the chat, so it's good. Glad, glad you uh, popped up here as well. Well, yeah, I appreciate every every last one of you guys. Um, so, and thank you all for the ones who joined the, the Patreon today. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it growing so we can get full time eventually, Lord willing, to where, um, you know, I can do this all the time, all day, every day. Um, so I'm grateful and I'm praying for that, praying, praying for that to happen. Uh, in the meantime, I will be on when I can, upload a new video when I can. I've uh, been kind of slow doing that stuff, but trying to get on it, guys, trying to get on it. So I love everybody. Keep me in your prayers. Probably about to start a new stream in a few minutes with this topic. It's all, all, right, all, all going. All right. Love you guys. Love you too, bro. All right.